Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Jamie Burlam podcast. My guest today is all around legend and Cows Phoenix YouTuber Ashton Sheriff. His YouTube channel, called Ashton Fitness, has more subscribers than the population of Greenland, which is mad, and millions of views, which is fantastic as I consider Ashton one of the best Cows Phoenix YouTubers out there. His Instagram is at Ashton underscore fitness underscore official. Now, I owe Ashton so much, and he really transformed my life and that of many of my friends, and did so before we even knew he existed. That is because he is the founder of my beloved Exeter University Calisthenic Society, aka Calsog, which I presided over with an iron fist in my second year of university, and where I have made many of my closest friends. Ashton previously studied English at the University of Exeter, and beyond Cows Phoenix is an insane guitarist, a big fan of metal music, and a mean rollerblader to boot. Join us today on a deep dive into a variety of topics, both Cows Phoenix and fitness related, and not. We talk about Ashton's decision to found Exeter Cows Phoenix Society and create a YouTube channel, despite the existence of massive Cows Phoenix YouTube channels already, for example, Chris Herrier and Austin Dunham. How do you build muscle with just your body weight? Can you train for multiple calisthenic skills at once? Which is more important on your fitness journey, hard work or discipline? How on earth do you learn how to do a handstand? And what does Ashton eat to look so buff? All of these questions shall be answered, and more, beyond your wildest dreams. We also share our thoughts and experiences with body image, steroid use, injuries, assertiveness, and give our thoughts on the statement, it's okay for men to cry, amongst other things. It's a really fun episode, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So, without further ado, I shall shut up, and you can hear me plug my social media. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow me on your favourite streaming platform some more. So you don't miss out on anything due to algorithm madness, I've made a free email newsletter that you can sign up to at jamiebolum.substack.com. I hate spam and much prefer speaking to writing, so as of now, the only intentions I have with the newsletter is to alert you guys to when an exciting new episode is being released, and who is slated to come on the podcast in the future. I might add some other bits, like what music I've been listening to lately, but I'm taking this one step at a time and I'm a busy guy, so there won't be anything too crazy on there just yet. You can also follow me on Instagram at jamie.a.bolum. Like the newsletter, I will just use this page to share updates on the podcast, but might also share some calisthenics some Latin dancing, basically anything that looks super cool, treating it like a public PR page for myself. So I would love it if you would give me a cheeky follow on there as well. Now, without further ado, I present to you, Ashton Sheriff. Okay, welcome back to the Jamie Bowen podcast. My guest today is my boy Ashton, yeah, the buddy. founder of Exeter University Calisthenic Society, many moons ago, <laughs> and uh, an all-round legend. Ashton, Thank would you. you like to introduce yourself? Thank you. My name's Ashton, and I, yeah, as, as Jamie said, I am the founder of the Exeter Calisthenic Society. I've also got a YouTube channel called Ashton Fitness, and that currently has about 76,000 subscribers or so. <laughs> which is pretty sick. It's more than the population of Greenland, which is oh, insane, nice. yeah. That's nice. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's really, really cool. And yeah, aside from that, kind of just really into metal music, rollerblading, working out, calisthenics, obviously. Yeah. And yeah, just trying to live, live the best life possible. Yeah, professional buff team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Full-time <laughs> chung team. <No>, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's jigs. Right, okay, so obviously we've been united through Calisthenic Society, you know, um, that's where I've met most of my best mates. Half the, the podcast guests so far are from Calisthenic. Half the people at my wedding will probably be from there. It'll be the buffest wedding on the planet. <laughs> so, um, you know, I have, I have to thank you for that. Um, but yeah, what made you want to make a Calisthenic Society? And actually, what is Calisthenic for, you know, some people will know, especially if they're mates with me, they probably will. But yeah. Um, yeah, what is calisthenics? Very briefly. That's a funny one because it, it's kind of like no one really knows how to even define what it is. Like even calisthenics yeah. athletes, they have a, uh, yeah. they struggle to define mm. what calisthenics is. And basically, what it is is essentially body weight exercises that 
are, well, let's say designed to build strength and muscle. Um, but a lot of those bodyweight exercises are derived from gymnastics and they are actually gymnastics movements. So like things like pull-ups, things like um, uh, the front lever, things like the planche, they're all gymnastic movements. Um, so yeah, it's like bodyweight exercises that are intended to build muscle and strength, but uh, that have been, but they have been derived from gymnastics yeah. skills, basically. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's more so like street workout stuff. Yeah. In a sense, right. And that's the thing. Like some people, some people think that there's a distinction between street workout and calisthenics as well. Oh, really? Um, I mean, I mean, they're pretty synonymous, but like street workout seems to have more of a kind of like gritty connotation. Yeah. Or at least it did back in the day when it first started. Like it was literally like yeah, working out in parks, working out in streets, which is calisthenics. But I feel like calisthenics is a bit more refined these days, whereas street workout was like it was hardcore and yeah. it was just like yeah like people didn't care so much about form for example it was just like get the get the skill done by any means possible okay. um but yeah that's so they're more the blocky fun. text and calisthenics has a bit of a italicized yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, okay. a, that's a good way to nice. yeah to describe it um but yeah how i founded the society was basically i used to go to these group workout sessions um run by block workout or brixton street gym and that is a, it started as basically mainly a calisthenics thing. Um, and it was these community sessions that were basically encouraging kids to come off the street and like bring the community together and basically, yeah, stop them from like stabbing each other and all that kind of stuff. Bring everyone together to work out and put their energies into something positive. And when I went to those, I was like, this is really, really cool. Like all of these guys, they're serious. They are really motivational. Just being around everyone is really motivational because obviously you get people from all different skill levels, but I was really interested in the people who were like way better than me because I was like, I want to be that strong. And when I first joined, I was super weak. So I basically, yeah, that really motivated me, but also brought me into the idea of working out in a community. So when I went to Exeter, then I was like, all right, cool. I want to start a society that does a similar kind of thing because I think this is a really cool way to bring people together and like to, yeah, to do the thing that I love, but with other people. So yeah, that was really, really cool. Um, and I started basically by printing out a whole bunch of flyers because what happened was I went to the student guild, um, which is kind of like the, I don't know, the governing body of all the societies. Yeah, it's like a student union. Yeah, exactly. They just call it a guild because it's fancy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's like Exeter and everything's fancy in Exeter. But... <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's jolly, jolly. Um, <laughs> but um, I went to those guys and I was like, I've got this idea for a society. It's the Calisthenic Society. Like, here is my idea. Can I do it? And they were like, no, you can't because it's too similar to the yoga society. And I was like, what? Like, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, clearly you don't know what calisthenics is because if you did, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even have made that comparison. But yeah, they rejected it. So <laughs> I basically just said, yeah, fuck you. And I'm going to do it anyway. So I basically printed out a whole bunch of flyers, like maybe like 500 flyers and went to the uh, forum, which is like the main hub where all of the societies kind of get together uh, during Freshers Week and advertise their society. And they have like nice desks and banners up and all that kind of thing. And that is obviously to attract loads of people, but I didn't have any of that because I was doing it unofficially um, because the space was there to use. Like there were bars up and there, were, there was a nice little space to do the workout stuff, but yeah, they didn't let me do it. So I was just like, all right, I'm gonna do it anyway. So then I was just handing out flyers, just talking to people. I had a plank competition. And the main reason why I chose the plank is because it's a bit more of a, it's a bit more accessible to both men and women yeah. like I, I originally thought about doing like a push-up competition to try and attract crowds because the main thing was i wanted to try and do the role of the tables and the banners because they're all like fancy and they've got the logos of all the official societies i wanted to fulfill that role but without having any of that so i was like yeah. how do i generate attention and that was my idea i was yeah. like right we're gonna have a league table with uh the like person with the best with the longest plank hold at the top and etc etc so it was a plank competition and I did that because, yeah, like guys, if I, if I did a push-up competition, it would have been too intimidating for a lot of the girls because they would have been like, oh, yeah. we're not like a lot of girls. They don't feel confident doing push-ups and stuff like that, especially yeah, yeah. in front of people. Yeah. Um, Plus they're more leg dominant. Well, yeah, yeah. And a lot of girls are just more interested in working out their legs. So it's just legs, like, Legs, yeah. arms and tons. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, they, they probably wouldn't be interested in that. Um, and likewise, if I did squats, like a lot of guys would just be like mm, squats, like I can't yeah. be bothered. So 
I did a plank because it was a bit of a neutral thing. And it was great at drawing crowds. Like, it was amazing. We had one guy who held the plank for literally like 13 and a half minutes, Whoa. which was insane. That's my, yeah, that's it my. was it was nuts. And we were outside the forum and it like drew the biggest crowd out of any yeah. society. Like it Easy. was nuts. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and yeah, so that's how I built the attention. And then we held the first session one day and it went really well. Like it was, it was great, massive turnout. And yeah, uh, from there, we just like, obviously the first session is always like massive turnout. And then after that, then it kind of trickles out because people, they, people just want to try it because it's a taster session, which is fair enough. Um, but then, yeah, eventually like we had our core little group and yeah, we just built it from there basically. Yeah, nice. So yeah, that's something we always, you know, everyone experiences when they make university of society is you have loads of people coming for us this week, at least hopefully. Uh, I remember in my first year, I think we had I don't know. There was one year we had like, we were expecting maybe 30. Um, and we had like 60 people show up. So it was so much. We were just shitting ourselves. We had to like redo our entire plan on the spot because there were so many people. Um, and then over time, you know, it does trickle out. So how do you go about retaining people? Obviously, you have to accept that some people will just not show up. Yeah. But, you know. Obviously, for anyone who has made it a society, yeah. and then people start, your numbers start to drop after the initial spike. You're yeah. always like, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> like, so yeah. how do you go about processing that? And, well, and I, I, I accepted that as an inevitability anyway, because I knew that that was going to happen. But also in terms of retaining people, I just made, I tried to make sure that I was as attentive and encouraging as possible, mm. because that's really important, especially for people who haven't done anything like calisthenics before. They need to feel like they're being looked after and they need to feel like they're in safe hands and yeah. they need to feel encouraged like because calisthenics is intimidating like if you can't do push-ups and you can't do pull-ups you're kind of like oh god i'm so weak like yeah. i can't do anything so if you have the right nurturing encouragement then it will stop you from spiraling into a like a, a mind state where you're like oh god i'm too i'm too weak for this i can't do this but if I'm kind of there and I'm encouraging people and I'm like, right, it's cool. Like you can do one, at least you can do one. That's brilliant, that's a start. And then I can show them how to modify it. So if they can only do one push up, then I'll be like, right, you can do them on your knees now and then you can do a couple more and then build up over time. And then that's kind of, I was just making sure to be, yeah, very encouraging and attentive um, to the people who were there. Absolutely, I think that's what I really enjoyed. It's such a wholesome environment. Yeah. Like. I think people have this idea about the gym and everyone's like, oh, they're going to be buff and nasty and, you know, the big guy's going to steal my protein shake and <laughs> take my spot on the bench press. <laughs> steal but, like, my girl. <laughs> exactly. But, like, everyone's just there trying to get buff. Yeah. You know, and it's such an uplifting environment. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's so important to be encouraging. Yeah. Especially because with calisthenics, you know, you can make it as easy or difficult, you know, as you might need. Yeah. You know, whether that's knee push-ups or... I don't know, any plank or whatever it is, like you can make it as easy as you want. Exactly. Which a lot of people don't, you know, it can be intimidating to see someone do a full plunge. Yeah. You know, 360 degree backflip kick, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but, you know, we all started out somewhere um, and you can use it as inspiration instead of being intimidated. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And a lot of people, unfortunately, like they will get intimidated and it will put them off. So again, that's why I was just trying to be encouraging and just, yeah, just be like, this is normal. Not everyone could do... I couldn't even do 10 push-ups when I first started. Mm. Like, I remember being in my room thinking, what the fuck? I'm so weak. I can't even do 10 push-ups. But for some reason, it didn't deter me. I was just like, right, the only solution is I have to get stronger, obviously. Because it's like, how could I not be able to do 10 push-ups? This is bullshit. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. like, when I first started doing pull-ups, I, I can't even remember how many I could do. But it definitely wasn't nearly... It probably wasn't even, like, three. Yeah. So, again, it's just, yeah, just giving people the encouragement... Um, and if you've got no one to encourage you, then you just have to do it yourself somehow. Um, and whatever motivates you. It was girls that motivated me at the beginning. So it is for just... many people. <laughs> it is for many. So yeah, I was just using that as fuel. And I was like, all right, yeah. I'm going to, yeah, I, I want to look good. So this is driving me to increase the reps, increase the weight, everything else, and yep. build the physique. Yeah. I feel like for, I wonder for how many guys, I wonder what girls motivations are for getting in shape as well i felt for guys at least to start with overwhelmingly when you're like 13 or 14 and you're like okay i need to just get buff yeah i just want six packs and that's kind of it that's yeah. your goal when you're like 13 or 14 or whatever, yeah. whenever you start working out but um i don't know i wonder how many start with girls as a motivation and then it kind of evolves for me at least start with you like okay, i want to look good have a six pack yeah. not that anyone's going to really see it when you're 12 
But then for me, I also started watching, I watched Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I saw Half Door Bjornsson. Okay. And I started watching all the strong man. And yeah. that inspired me as well. Yeah. Not because I, I didn't care, care about the girls at that point. I was like, these guys are buff and they're cool. I, I like seeing what they do. Yeah. Um, moving cars around. And yeah. I was like, I want to move a car around. That sounds cool <laughs> as well. But I don't know. What, what were your motivations then? Um, and how did they evolve over time? Well, because like, I think any motivation is good enough to get into the gym. If yeah. it gets you in the gym, it's good enough. I you heard know? you say that in in the podcast with Nick, and yeah. that's yeah, that's truth. Like, yeah, use anything as long as it gets you in the gym. Because the thing about once you step foot in the gym, or once you step foot into the calisthenics park, or whatever, you will change your life for the better if you obviously stick with it. And I don't know a single person who has begun working out who has not, who, who has regretted it. Like everyone, everyone who's worked out and has improved their physique have drastically improved their lives as well. So it's like, yeah, anything, even if it's like, oh God, someone broke up with me and I want to like get revenge or whatever. Fine. Like, yeah, d- do it as long because you're funneling your positive energy into, into something that's, sorry, you're, you're funneling your negative energy into something that's positive. Um, and ultimately that's a good thing rather than spiraling off and funneling your negative energy into something negative because yeah you can like either crossfit <laughs> <laughs> trust me what they're pull-ups are about but like yeah like you can there are, there are two paths you can either funnel the negative energy that you've got into something that's going to build you up and you can use that negative energy as fuel or you can use the negative energy spiral off in the other direction and then you start taking drugs and you start like banging loads of alcohol and you just get like mad just like yeah you become a bum and that is the more favorable option is to improve your life if you can um and use that energy into something that's constructive so yeah the gym so again if you so in terms of because the original question was what was my motivation what was your motivation um my motivation initially was girls um i wanted to look good for them and then eventually it it changed to I want to when I started getting into calisthenics I was like I want to learn these cool calisthenics skills because I saw the Hannibal for King video and I was like this is sick like he's just I've never seen anything like this so it changed from yeah wanting to look good for girls to actually I genuinely want to get better at this very niche thing which is calisthenics and it wasn't big at the time it was very niche and um so then it changed to that and then when I started kind of uh teaching people in society then I was like okay my motivation changed again now I genuinely want to help people yeah. and then again when I started my YouTube channel I was like I'm doing this because I genuinely want to help so that's the evolution of the motivation yeah I'd say that's similar for me as well actually I think when especially if you're in a leadership position and you're doing something like oftentimes you can feel it's like thankless work or something yeah. but when you see people getting buffer you know we had one guy I always mention Marco he's our miracle child <laughs> um, when he first came to the society when I was president he couldn't do a knee push up he couldn't do anything right Mad. and I like literally I, I, was, I was scared because I was like I can't think of anything for this guy to do like you know the barest minimum he was yeah, really yeah, struggling yeah. with but he kept on coming to our workouts you know twice a week the only time he'd missed it was to train for a half marathon yeah and like now he he's buff he's Good. so buff Good. he's huge <laughs> you know it's like this is what we, 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 we our, our joke last year was he's just gonna get buff enough to just take over the committee like <laughs> you know he's like the hulk he's huge Good. Um, and that was really like beautiful to see but then also when people do thank you you know like when i went to help out with freshers week this year you know i graduated from exeter but went down to my mates helped out and hearing people say you know before i left like oh you know jamie like calisthenics exchanged my life like yes you know what i mean like you know get buff get in shape i've made great friends like I started crying. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, fuck you, man. Like, I'm literally about to go. <laughs> you know? Um, That's beautiful. But it's beautiful and it, you know, it, it all pays off. Um, I love that. You know? Yes. And, and it, it's such, it's such a nice motivator, you know? And they all stack on top of each other, you know? And of course, we still want to look buff. Yeah. Here for ourselves, but also, you know, to be attractive. Yeah, exactly. You know? And yeah. of course, you want to do it because you want to do cool skills, but all these motivations stack on top of each other as well. Yeah, yeah. And why is it that you thought why, why do you think that Marco stuck with it? Because for most people, they would have given up. If they couldn't even do the bare minimum, they would just be like, do you know what? Fuck this. I'm not doing this. So why do you think he stuck with it? Um, I don't know. I mean, I need to ask Marco myself. But yeah. I think if I had to insert myself into his mind. Uh, <laughs> um, Let's channel the spirit of Marco. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone hold hands. Um, Light some candles. <laughs> uh, I guess, you know, you can only go up 
yeah. you know, especially if you're at the very fitness beginning of your fitness journey. Like, yeah. there's only one way to go, you know, and there's only one way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and if you can imagine yourself getting stronger and you, you start to see results, you just have to trust the process, you know, and you have to realize it's going to take some time to yeah. get better. You know, you are going to suck when you start something new. Yeah. Um, so, I guess, yeah, just knowing that it will pay off and just having faith in the process yeah. would help you stick with something. Yeah. You know. And some people don't suck. Like, this is a really interesting thing that I've noticed, as in, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that Marco yeah, yeah, suck. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, because you said when you, when you start, you're going to suck. Yeah. But the interesting thing, what I've noticed is, because I've got a couple of, like, calisthenics for beginners videos mm. on YouTube. A couple million views right there. Ladies <laughs> and gents, check them out. <laughs> One of them's got three, three million views now. It's insane. Right. Um, but yeah, like, the... It's, it's very hard to define what a calisthenics beginner is because the range of ability in that beginner range just varies so wildly. Like That's you true. do get some people who literally can't do any push-ups even on their knees. And then you get other people who have never done calisthenics before, but they can somehow do 10 push-ups. So yeah, yeah it really depends on the, on the person. I think a lot of people, for most people, yeah, it will be a struggle when mm-hmm. you first start. But if you know that and you just know that, eventually you will get stronger if you keep continuing to just do it then yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get over that. And soon your main workout will become your warm up, yeah. And that's a piece of advice that is really like, that motivated me a lot because I, I remember when someone first told that, I wish I could remember who told me that, but, and I think it came from Block Workout actually. Oh, yeah. some, some guy at Block Workout must've said that, but yeah, I remember when he said that, I couldn't even conceive of how that would be possible. Cause I was like, flipping hell, like how could this, what we've done today be my warm up one day? And lo- like, it, it does happen. Like, yeah, you get, you just get stronger. So yeah, um, it's, it's very possible. Yeah. Do you think, is there a, obviously I think, I mean, my belief is that you can tailor calisthenics to anyone, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen it done. Um, they say, you know, equipment free. That's with the caveat of you, yeah. need, you need a pull up bar or something yeah. or something to suspend some pulling apparatus, like some rings or something on ideally. Um, but do you think, is there a point, let's say if you're like morbidly obese or something, mm-hmm. everything is going to be way harder. Do you think, is there a point at which you need to lose weight first before you do calisthenics? Um, or what do you think? Potentially. If you were like, potentially. Huge. It really depends on, yeah, I, I don't know because it really depends on that person's level of mobility. And obviously mm. if they're like super overweight, they might not even be able to do push-ups. Like, That's because true. yeah, they just anatom- yeah, their stomach might get in the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, or they might not be able to do squats because their body just, they can't support the weight. So yeah. at that point, you probably would have to lose weight before you started. Yeah. yeah. But I guess if you're at that point, you should be losing weight. Yeah. Like, on your fitness yeah. journey anyways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. So. yeah, man, like it's, it's, no one's, no one I've ever spoken to has ever regretted getting in shape yeah like put it that way um i won't even go into the whole politics of whether i won't even go into the politics of it just get in shape is get yeah get in shape it's healthy and you feel great everyone i know everyone i've ever met and i will go as far to say that i'm convinced that everyone i will meet in the future from the moment that i'm recording this podcast to the moment that i perish will (laughs) agree with me that yeah getting in shape is yeah like this changed their life for the better yeah yeah i agree amen nice so another thing we just try- wanted to chat about um i guess going on for motivations hard work or consistency like discipline versus motivation uh, what's your take um hard work versus consistency consistency for sure mm-hmm. because the way that i see it is say if you go to the gym once a week and you put everything into that gym session you work your ass off and yeah you're aching for the next i don't know five days or whatever you've only gone to the gym once that week. And especially in the context of calisthenics, once a week working any type of calisthenics skill is not enough. So you, you, you need the consistency and it's the consistency that leads to strength increase. It's the consistency that leads to muscle increase. It's the consistency that leads you to learn advanced calisthenics skills. Because the thing about advanced calisthenics skills is you have to be consistent because you have to train your body to be in those extreme positions because those extreme positions like the planche, the front lever, there's nothing in your daily life that even comes close to replicating the strain your body is under in those positions. So you have to keep training it consistently in order for your body to become comfortable and used to holding that kind of position. Otherwise it just never will. So that's why the consistency is important. And yeah, I've, I've thought about this for a while now and yeah, it's definitely the consistency. Obviously work hard, be consistent and work hard at the same time. 
But if I were to pick one over the other, consistency. All right. So sure. what, what about so length of workouts? Because you know it's nice to get a fat two hour gym session. You know, and like I do enjoy that myself. And when we were at the Cal's Phoenix Society, we'd normally keep it would normally be about an hour and a half. You know, like an hour from a workout, and then half an hour of dicking around afterwards. Um, but sometimes people are in. You know, they're in a rush. They might only have a short amount of time. What's your take on? Can you can you get buff in like a shorter amount of time? How, how would you do that? Like, do you, do you always need a two hour gym sesh? You don't yeah. always need a two hour gym sesh. Like anything, there should be balance. The, if you're having like super, super long gym sessions, then it could be less efficient. But if you're having super short gym sessions that are only like, I don't know, 10 minutes, you're not gonna really be able to do that much. I mean, maybe when you first start training, at least you're working out for 10 minutes. If that's all you can do, at least that's a start and that's good, like do that. Um, because I remember, yeah, I used to just, when I first started, I used to just do like a 10 minute ab workout in my room. That was it. That was oh, my same, workout. Same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, but of Six course. pack shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Man like Mike Chang. <laughs> oh, my God. Get Mike on the podcast. <laughs> Trust me. And you can. I think he's quite accessible. Like, he's been on quite a few podcasts. Oh, that's good. On. Oh, man. When he, he resurfaced after, he disappeared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. For yeah. ages, right? Because he left Six Pack Shortcuts. Yeah. So I think he had some issues with drugs or something. I heard. Oh, God. Um, and then he, he resurfaced like what two years ago or something yeah you know super zen you know, he found himself <laughs> good and, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see he's alive you know? yeah 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 um, but anyways um where were we on i can't, I can't even little ab workouts 10 oh, minute workouts 10 minute, yeah, yeah yeah um yeah you don't need you don't need a two hour gym session especially if you're new to it and especially if you're yeah doing it for the first time um but then eventually as your muscles get more used to things then yeah and ultimately it depends on it comes ultimately what it comes down to is what you enjoy doing because if you're enjoying working out then that's when it will be truly sustainable and it will ultimately depend on what you are capable of just in terms of your body like what your body can handle some people can do two-hour workouts i can do two-hour workouts and i feel blessed some people can't and some people prefer because that they just know their body they know what works best for them some people like Hannibal for King, he says that he only stays in the park for an hour and he will do everything that he needs to do in an hour. So it just depends on the individual. Yeah. Yeah, nice, cool. And do you think can you train for multiple calisthenic skills at once? How yeah, what's your thoughts? Do you focus on one at a time? Do you have different days? It depends on the skill, I think. So there are certain skills. So like the beginner skills that are a bit more accessible, like the L sit, uh, let's say the I don't know, bar pullover. Even the muscle up, like they can, you can train for all of those skills at the same time. Because, say, for example, if you're training for the muscle up and you're training for the L sit, like those are two, they, they're kind of working two very different muscle groups. Obviously, you're going to be working your abs during the, the muscle up, but yeah, the L sit is kind of working your abs and triceps more, muscle ups kind of. Or you're pulling muscles, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, you can get away with training like the more beginner skills at the same time. But when it comes down to like more advanced skills like front lever planche, I think it works better if you focus solely on them um, and something like handstand push-ups, for example, because if you start trying to train handstand push-ups and then the planche in the same session, your shoulders are just going to be too fatigued. You're not going to you're not going to be able to do it effe effect effectively or efficiently and you might injure yourself. So, yeah, yeah. Um, when it starts to get to a, a more advanced stage, then, yeah, focus on one. Yeah, so. that's a mistake I made, like I was saying before we were recording, like, uh, yeah, after I got back from uh, Portugal and all my um, chilling out over summer, yeah, I was like, okay, I need to crack down on some exercise. <laughs> you know, did did some more exercises in Portugal than I thought. There are tons of Cali parks. It was beautiful to see, and honestly, the weather's nice, so it's nice to train outside. Yeah. Unlike the UK in December, um, but I was like, okay, I'm gonna go super ham before Oxford. You know, so I was like trying to train planche, iron cross. You know, both dumbed down versions of those. I'm not at the, the full things yet. Yeah. Uh, and what was the other one? And handstands as well. Yeah. And I don't know. I just hurt my clavicle somehow. Yeah. And I've had that all through term one. It was getting better. Um, but I was avoiding like pull-ups and stuff. Mm -hmm. It meant I had to train legs, which yeah. has been good. Um, I finally started back on the leg day grind. Good. With the weighted legs. Good. Um, good old testosterone boost. Oh, yeah. Always. <laughs> um, and then halfway through term, just before a rowing race... Like I was doing pull-ups and I pulled my abs somehow, which Ooh. I've never had before in my life. So don't let that beat off pull-ups, the yeah. listeners. Um, and then as soon as that was okay again, or ish, um, then I, like a few weeks ago, I was like, okay, let me try some back levers. And then my, my shoulder was like, no, mm. um, again, 
but yeah so definitely yeah i think with more advanced things definitely focus on one at a time yeah which might be painful because then you're like worried like oh you know am i going to get worse at the other ones you, but no no you what's won't your thoughts? yeah no you won't because you will you will you will still be building a lot of very transferable strength so even if you're working on like your plant for example that strength the strength that you build in your shoulders working on the plant will transfer over even if it's only slightly and it might be a lot but it will transfer over to your handstand push-up for example so even though one is straight arm strength and the other one is bent arm strength they you're still building a lot of strength in your shoulders so yeah it, it, it shouldn't impact your progress too much nice cool yeah. what, what skills are you working on at the moment um, I am working on getting my back lever back because yeah. I haven't been able to do anything like that for a while because I've been going through a shoulder injury for, well, two shoulder injuries back to back for the last, I don't know, I don't even know how long this has been going on for now, three to four years maybe. So yeah, I haven't been able to do anything like super advanced. So I'm just getting my back lever back, started working on it for the first time a couple of days ago, actually. Oh, yeah. Nice. So yeah, um, that, that would be cool to get that one back. And uh, yeah, and I want to get like some super explosive high pull ups because yeah, I think the transition for the muscle up is very, it can put your shoulder in a very compromising position. Yeah. But how I'm going to try and get over that is if you just can pull up as explosively, so exactly, that yeah. like the transition is just minimal over the top, yeah. then yeah, it will alleviate that problem. So that's the kind of what I'm yeah. trying to work on as well. Nice. What's your thoughts on, you have like super slow reps, you know, you can, it's cool when you see someone do a super slow muscle up yeah. and stuff. But compared with like super explosive strength, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Do you, do you prefer one over the other? Or do you... uh, um, I prefer, it, it really depends. Okay, it, it completely depends on the form and the execution. Mm. If you're doing explosive reps and the form's whack, then I have no time for it because it's just like, well, of course you can like pull yourself up super high and super explosive on the pull-up bar because you, you're yanking your knees up. You're generating mm. all, these, all this momentum with your knees. But if you're doing that super explosive stuff and your legs are completely straight, like say if you're trying to do like an explosive pull up or an explosive muscle up and your legs are dead straight, then that's super impressive. That's hard to do. Most people, they can't do that. Um, whereas with slow stuff, I find that very impressive. And if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick slow. It's more impressive um, because you, it requires a, you can't cheat that. That's like true. you can cheat explosive stuff with momentum, you can cheat explosive stuff with bad form, but you can't cheat slow stuff. So yeah, and I that's why I love Hannibal for King because he's like the king of slow stuff. Like he's got one in that legendary video that basically like started calisthenics essentially. Um, he's got one scene where he does like this. He's in between two very low benches on the ground, and he like lowers down into this front lever. But he does it so slowly and with such control and kind of like does this like funny little body shimmy down yeah. into the front lever. It looks so sick. And yeah, I just love that control. So yeah, control and slowness, I think is yeah very admirable. Nice. I think one, when you're going into things like handstand pushups, like then it turns back into strength. But yeah. a handstand as it is, is more of a balanced thing. So how, how do you go about, that's one thing I'm focusing on a lot. Yeah. I want to try and get my freestanding handstand consistently. Yeah. Um, and then so I can start doing freestanding handstand push-ups and stuff. But yeah. how would you go about training handstands? Because it's something that's also very accessible to everyone. Yes, Like when you're in a gymnastics club, like you don't need to be super strong yeah. to do a handstand. No, you, you need don't. good body awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I would go about doing it. A lot of people are scared of falling. So you need to conquer that fear first if you have that fear. So the way to do that would be just to practice up against a wall. And that way, at least you're guaranteed, you, you, you can do it confidently knowing that you, there's no way you can fall forward. Like, unless you're some kind of like, unless you figure out how to <laughs> master quantum time and your atoms and you can just dissolve yourself through the wall, <laughs> like, you're, you're not going to be falling through that wall. So it's like, you, you can start off by doing stuff like that, but some people are not even strong enough to hold themselves up against the wall. So what do you do then? Well, work up the strength by doing like push-ups, pike push-ups that kind of thing, work up slowly through that and then you can work on getting up against the wall and then once you can do that, yeah, just work on trying to get, you bring one leg off the wall first and then you bring the other one to join it and then you can practice holding that and then that way again you've got the wall to, to focus, uh, to, to stop you from falling forward and then eventually just start trying them free freestanding um, and do like reps of 
you just do confidence reps. Like I can't remember what I called them in one of kick my ups. tutorials. Yeah, handstand kickups. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, you just start off. You don't even you don't even try to hold the handstand initially. You just get comfortable just kicking off the ground, feeling what it feels like to to be in that vertical position. And then once you get comfortable doing that, then you start trying to hold it. And then eventually, obviously you're not gonna do it first time. So then you basically just have to keep on, keep on doing it until it becomes easier and easier. And then as you kick off the ground, you just slow the acceleration until you reach that center point. And then yeah, you just balance there. And then nice. you got it. And yeah. obviously there's a bit more technique, but that's why you check out my YouTube tutorials yeah. on Ashton Fitness. <laughs> I do rate them. I honestly, I really recommend them to people because I, I, you know, I mean, obviously you're in the room with me as well. And I, I do like, you know, I like you, so I'm going to gas you up anyways. <laughs> but I do find them honestly just very like, they're so informative as well. Because sometimes like, you know, you can watch, uh, you know, the two big dogs in the calisthenics YouTube yeah. show would be Chris Harrier and Austin Dunham, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, back in the day. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I haven't kept up with them much now, but yeah, they're still either. around. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, mad respect to, you know, you know, they started the YouTube stuff, mm. you know, and there's Hannibal King as well. Yeah. Even before them. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you'd watch like a Chris Harrier video and it'd be like burpees or something. And they're like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. And the next episode, the next exercise is like a one-arm planche or <laughs> something crazy. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I can't do that. <laughs> Whereas like, you, yeah, you break them down, you break down all the moves really well. I've been learning handstands using your videos as well, which is why I asked about handstands. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and like, yeah, during lockdown, I was following along with your leg, leg workouts and, you know, all the, all the other stuff. Yeah. Um, but when you do have such like, let's say you've got titans like Chris Harrier, already with loads of calisthenics content on YouTube, you know, and other people like that, what made you what made you make the youtube channel so because some people would see that and be like oh there's no way like there's already the cows finished guy on youtube like exactly I'm, I'm, what can little old me like contribute you well know? that's the thing so back then yeah the two the two top dogs were definitely chris harry and austin dunham and but it was still a very small and niche thing when i decided to do the channel and that's also why i got involved because i was like okay well i'm not as big as those guys but there is still a lot of space for this for calisthenics to grow and especially on youtube there isn't that much competition because yeah to get to the level where you can teach it confidently takes a long time and yeah a lot of people don't get there basically so yeah it's um i i started it because of that but i genuinely wanted to help people so i started it mainly to help like i did regardless of whether like people saw it or whatever like i was like i just genuinely want to help people and that was the main thing and yeah in terms of carving out my own niche i'm so glad that you said that they're informative the videos because yeah, absolutely that is my niche like i i've got a degree in english literature um and i'm a copywriter and that's my full-time job so when it comes to expressing and conveying ideas and exp it, conveying things in a clear and concise way i I'm good at that um so that is how i decided to carve out my niche because i was like i'm never going to be as like well i could be but yeah i'm not as currently i'm not as big and shredded as these guys i'm not as strong as these guys but what i can do which they could do better i'm not going to criticize them and say that they don't do it well but what they could do better is convey their information in a much more accessible way and that's where i chose to dial in and find the niche and you get like loads of people like people from different countries they're like wow you're the way that you explain these concepts is so clear like i understand you more than other people and that's exactly what i want because mm -hmm. i think it's really important when you're teaching people calisthenic skills the risk of injury the risk of all these kinds of things is so high yeah that it's just like yeah you have to be if you're telling people how to do a thing and it's potentially dangerous make sure you're telling them how to do it in the right way and that's what i, I really care about so yeah that's my kind of niche i just present information in a very clear accessible and easy to follow way yeah nice so yeah i want to pick up on that you said high risk of injury i think it depends on what you do yeah generally i found i mean i was a younger you know dumber gym bro you know back in the day when i was doing weights mm -hmm. i was like 16 but so maybe that's part of it as well but i do find i generally have had way less way fewer injuries doing calisthenics than with yeah. weights until like the summer when I just really went too ham on all the shoulder stuff, all the more advanced stuff. But what, yeah, what are your thoughts on like risk of injury in calisthenics? If you're doing freestyle stuff when you're flipping around the bars, yeah, then obviously you know because these calisthenics guys are crazy. They're doing it on like 
you know, concrete or like just out in a park. Yeah. You know, no crash mats. Yeah. You're going to hurt yourself doing 360s and They're stuff. They're hardcore. And falling off. Have you seen but, those dons in Russia like doing all yeah, that? Yeah. I'm thinking right, you're doing right. that on not only just hard concrete, but like ice. snow hardened yeah, concrete, yeah, yeah. like ice hardened. It's hardened. crazy. It's um, nice. But apart from that, I've generally found it to have yeah. a relatively good not being injured Great. Good. So yeah, I don't know what your what's your experience. Yeah. And what I, do you need to? What are the most common injuries um, that people can avoid? I mean, I don't. I mean, I when it comes to calisthenics and just building a physique and all that kind of stuff, I don't really tend to focus or specialize on injuries. So I can't. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know what all yeah. of the. Just in your own experience. I mean, what I see a lot of is shoulder injuries. Mm. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, it's funny because I had never really sustained any major injuries when it comes to calisthenics, and everyone's different. Like, you get some people who have those horror stories in the YouTube comment section. They'll be like, "Oh, I tried this push up and I tore my entire shoulder off." <laughs> it's, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's like, and then you get other people who are like, "Yeah, I've never never had an injury." And I think if you're training properly, you will. There's a very small chance that you will ever get injured. Like, I don't think you will. Um, and obviously injuries are a natural part of doing anything that's like strenuous and athletic, but yeah, like I'd never had a serious injury and that's cause I was always training properly, always trying to make sure to have good form, um, and always listening to my body. That's a very important thing that you have to do. Um, cause if your body is telling you to stop, then listen to it. Yeah. Or if your body is telling you that it can't do a certain thing, then just go back a progression and then focus on that. But, uh, I've actually forgotten the original question. Lol. Injuries. <laughs> yeah. Injuries. The, yeah, so in terms of um, injuries, yeah, you asked me what the most common ones. Yeah, shoulders, I see a lot. Um, I say wrists. Wrists, I do you, see. You're doing yeah, everything yeah. on your hands, generally. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's so, very true. Especially if it's handstands or planche. Yeah, and elbows as well. Oh, elbows, yeah. yeah. Yeah, tendonitis in the elbows. That's a good one. And that's why, like, yeah, so a lot of people run into wrist complications if they're doing, like you said, handstands, push-ups, that kind of thing. Mm. Because if you're not used to having your hand pressed up against the floor in that kind of angle, then it's going to put a lot of pressure on your wrist. And I was the same. Um, I, yeah, when I first started doing push-ups, I remember I actually had like a bandage around my hand because my wrist used to hurt so much. But eventually you just condition your wrist to handle it. Um, mm. And that doesn't mean push through the pain necessarily. Um, but yeah, eventually. your joints will grow slower than your muscles. Yeah, exactly. You know? So your muscles will get bigger, but especially when you're doing these hard things, you have to wait for your joints to catch up. Yeah, and and yeah, it just takes some conditioning. Um, but eventually, your wrist won't hurt when you do push-ups. And the same thing with like uh, elbow tendonitis. It's quite easy to kind of get that, especially if you're doing like body weight tricep extensions. Mm. That's why I've made I've made videos about uh, both like wrist pain during push-ups and also tricep extension like elbow like trying to avoid elbow pain during that because those are two common things actually um so yeah like it's, it's just about building up slowly like don't rush into it just build up slowly and then eventually yeah you will condition all the tendons all the bones all the ligaments all that kind of stuff to be able to handle it yeah nice what's your thoughts so obviously it depends if you're doing like quite a I don't know what the term would be, like a delicate exercise with smaller muscle groups, like I don't know, a face pull or wrist curls or something. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to go for a one rep max on wrist curls. Like you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. Like, you're going to do like, I don't know, higher reps. Yeah. But where, where, what's your thoughts on, you know, people sometimes go for super high reps on stuff. Like, would you rather do like, I don't know, <laughs> 200 push ups or like, I don't know, some weighted dips and you're only doing a few reps? This Ooh. one. I feel strongly about, you know, because I got sucked in and trapped by this. So <laughs> it depends on what your goal is. But what I will say is this, if you want to build muscle and even strength, but I mean, strength you will build, but if you, especially if you want to build muscle, doing hundreds and hundreds of reps is not the way to go about it. Um, because eventually you will reach a point where you end up burning more calories than you're consuming. And obviously that will completely, and and utterly depend on how much you're actually eating. I mean, you could eat a lot more and then you wouldn't be. But yeah, I, I found in my own experience that I was, because I used to do hundreds of reps, like literally hundreds. There was one day I did 300 pull-ups, 300 push-ups. And then there was another, I used to do this Mad. 15 to one circuit, which was 15 pull-ups, 15 push-ups, 15 dips, then 14 pull-ups, 14 push-ups, 14 dips, then all the way down to like one. I did and a 20 to one set of push-ups yesterday actually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. This is struck. Was it was it just push ups? Yeah, it was just like a quick one because okay. I was like, I just need some, some yeah, yeah. energy. But I would, I call it a sandwich set. I'll do twenty. Yeah, then I'll do one. 
Okay. Then I do 19, then two. Oh. And I go, so I, I end on 10 reps. Okay. Um, That's an interesting But I don't know how set. it would stack up compared with just a straight drop set. That's an interesting set. I've never tried that. But, that's, that's quite cool. Yeah. Um, Anyways. Sorry yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sandwich set. I'll try that one day. Yeah, yeah give it a go. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, yeah. So yeah. 300 I, pull-ups, you said. Exactly. I right. used to, the point is I used to do loads and loads of reps and it was great for getting me shredded. Like I was the most shredded I had been at that time, but obviously that's because I'm burning loads of calories. So if you want to build muscle, then you will want to do exercises that are challenging. And by challenging, that means, so you've got the traditional bodybuilding rep ranges. You've got like one to five reps. That's the quote unquote strength building range. Then you've got like, uh, let's say seven to 10 reps, which is the hypertrophy muscle building range and then you got 12 plus reps which is like the endurance if you want to build endurance then yeah do 12 plus reps do hundreds of reps because that will build your endurance like nothing else but if you want to build muscle and size which is what a lot of people want to do when they start calisthenics then yeah you want to stick to exercises that you can only really do seven to ten reps of so when you can do 10 push-ups rather than going okay like if your goal is to build muscle rather than going okay well now i'm going to try and do 20 push-ups then what you want to do instead is be like, okay, well, let me try a harder push-up variation that I can only do about seven reps of. And then that way you challenge your muscles and then they will grow. Um, because otherwise, if you start doing loads of reps, you're not really challenging, your, you are challenging your muscles, but in not in the way that promotes the most ideal muscle growth. So yeah, um, I would say that. Um, but of course, if you want to do hundreds of reps, then feel free to do that as well. Because some people do want to train their endurance. And I did at the time when I was doing them. Yeah. But I also wanted to build muscle. And that was frustrating because I was like, why am I not building muscle? Yeah. I can do 300 pull-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Your back should be the size of Jupiter. That's like, what I'm yeah. saying. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, that's that. Nice. What are your thoughts on... Obviously, you got interested in calisthenics through the block workouts at Brixton. And yeah. then you wanted to make your own community. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the real joy that I've found is... The friends I made through working out, you know, yeah. as well as getting buff, but mm -hmm. working out with your friends is a real joy. How, what are your thoughts on working out alone versus, you know, with a community? I have been trying to figure out which one I prefer for years, and I really like them both. I feel like there's a lot of benefits to working out alone because you can really dial in and you don't have any distractions. Sometimes if you're working out with people, you just get sucked into conversation before you know you've rested too long and it's just like, oh God, you're not working out properly. So it's really good to work out alone to, to, to dial in, but also to really build that like my muscle connection as well, like properly as well, because you need that time of yourself to understand what your body needs and to understand how your body works. So that's really important. But working out with the community, there's nothing like it. Like it's like one of the best things ever. And like when you're surrounded by people and like everyone's motivating each other and everyone's putting in the work, like it's a really uplifting vibe. Like, and you can feel it in the air, like it's electric. So yeah, they both have their, their pros and cons. It's really difficult to, to decide which one is better and which one I prefer. What do you prefer? I think I appreciate both. I, like the points you made are very poignant. Yeah. And since I've been at Oxford, I've just been working out by myself. Um, you know, and that's what I did when I was at the gym. I also treated a gym when I was in sixth form. There was a gym right next to the school. So I was also my social club. Yeah, and like every time I went there, I was like, okay, I'm going to speak to someone new. And it was really lovely because then you go into the gym, you know, same time each week and you'll see all the friendly faces and you have lots of people you can smile and say hi to, you know, and chat with. And that's like really nice. But I think just, you know, I mean, like I said at the start of the podcast, my best mates I found through Cows Phoenix and it's a way to meet people with the same interests and yeah. I don't know calisthenics attracts at least in my experience just they're the kind of people that I just love hanging out with all the time you know I don't know what it is loads of them like anime I don't know what that's about <laughs> too many of like anime but you have just like a clap sense of humour <laughs> you know um, and we were like you know we've all got our heads in the right direction yeah um, but so coming from all of that and that being my main workout last year to then yeah, just working out alone. I was like, man, I miss I yeah. miss all the guys, right? Yeah. Um, so, but then you can, you like you said, you can focus on other things, and you can yeah make it more focused on yourself. Yeah. So I think at the moment, if I could just bring calisthenics society to Oxford, I would. That would or even happen. if there, there if there was just some public bars, you know, that'd be sick. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping to join like the gymnastics club or something, 
to try and replicate that to some extent because yeah. I don't have the time to make a calisthenic society. So where are you doing pull-ups at the moment? Are you doing them on rings? They have, yeah, so I've been doing them on bars. They have some crusty rings, um, yeah. <laughs> but I've been, I've been poking crusty them to get them replaced. Rings. They literally like split. <laughs> They've literally split. Uh. Um, so <laughs> I can, splinters yeah. while you're trying to get wedge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's long. Yeah, so um, I prefer rings. What do yeah. you think? Rings versus bars. What's your thought? I will go rings the whole way. Really? I prefer rings. bars, man. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe that's because I know that rings are actually secretly harder, so maybe <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why I'm, I'm avoiding them. But I just, I just, I love just the bar. Like, the bar is just sick because yeah. that's what got me into it. So yeah. when I just see, like, a, a nice, like, workout park with just some good bars, I'm like, that is true. this is it. Yeah. 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 If it was is a station of rings somehow suspended about bars or a station of bars, it'd be nicer to have the bars around. It looks more aesthetic, but... Just the rings, I know from my own experience, like when I started doing ring training, I just put on way more extra muscle, just from all the stabilizing oh, really? stuff. Ooh. I could just see it visibly. Yeah. Like my shoulders were getting more round, you know, I just felt way more wham. Whoa. You know? um, yeah, that makes sense. Because if you go into front support on a dip bar, yeah, you know, and you're just holding yourself up, obviously if you've never done it before, it's hard, but the ring, sorry, the bars, they're not moving around yeah. you. Whereas the rings will want to get out of your way. Yeah, so you have yeah, to actively... Yeah. Yeah, that's true. When you're when you first get on, you're flapping like a penguin. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, at least I was. I was shocked. Yeah, it looks so easy. Um, yeah, but it's not. No, it's so not. So even all of that, it makes it way harder. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm just being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I prefer the bar because I really know that the rings are actually way harder. Like doing dips on rings is just like it's insane. Like it's the, not- the difference between doing dips on parallel bars and doing dips on rings is unreal yeah so yeah shout out to all the gymnasts man because yeah they, they're buff they're, they're buff. so they're so strong it's unreal yeah what's your thoughts on steroid use um <laughs> i i do not mind people using them like if you want to use steroids go ahead like do it um the only thing that i do mind is that when people claim that they're natural when they're not and then they got like loads of fans and loads of subscribers who are invested in them and believe in them and think that they can achieve that kind of physique naturally. That's when I think it's like, come on, like you're being dishonest in a way that can be actually very damaging to a lot of people's lives. Cause when it comes to like body image issues and all that kind of stuff, like, yeah, like I've been through that myself. Like I looked up to all these like bodybuilders when I was a kid and they were like, yeah, man, I'm natural. I got this physique with just hard work. And yeah. I was like, yeah, like you really can achieve that. And then, like, people in the comments would be like, oh, this guy's on roids. And I would be commenting back going, no, he's not, man. He did this through hard work. You just don't want to work as hard as him. And then, <laughs> lo and behold, I have discovered that many of the influencers that we all know and love are on steroids. And Not Liver King. Surely not <laughs> Liver King. Well. No. <laughs> no. Well. <laughs> no. <laughs> more plates, more dates would say otherwise. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like yeah it's 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 fine if you want to use them like i if there were no side effects i'd probably be on them like i'm just scared of the side effects like yeah. honestly and nobody talks about the bad side effects yeah like the, the bad side effects are pretty peak and they hit different people in different ways um some people get like hardly anything some people just get absolutely murked so yeah like and that's not me condoning or saying oh yeah everyone jump on zero like i'm just saying like that's just my opinion like yeah, maybe I probably would be on them if there were no side effects. I think everyone would. Like, because why would you want, like, it's literally, yeah, you can become so much stronger, like, and you can become so much more jacked. And there are all of these, yeah, benefits that make me understand why people would want to take steroids. Um, but, of course, they that comes with health risks. And if people are doing that, then they've got to be very, they've got to do a lot of blood work and they got to be very on top of their health because it can like really fuck you up if you don't do it in the right way. Um, but yeah, if you're doing them, just say you're doing them. Don't yeah. try and make out like you're natural. Interesting. I think it undercut, for me, I, it would depend on your reasoning. If you're a professional bodybuilder and you want to compete in the non-natural category, you know, like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Or like, if you're like trying to be like the literal strongest man on the planet. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. But for your average Joe, like, I feel like the reasons why you take it so you're undercutting the benefits of all the hard work and discipline mm. you know not to say like if you're like you know chris bump said obviously you're working hard yeah you know or anyone else you know you're huge you're working hard you're also on steroids but you are working hard you die at some point yeah you know, not bashing that yeah but for your average joe like 
I feel like you know it, it, it's we we live in a world of instant gratification, right? Mm. And it's like I want gains now, yeah. you know, and I want them like ASAP. You know, the studies show that you know compared to just working out and not taking steroids or taking steroids and not working out, you gain more muscle quicker. Yeah, by just taking steroids and not yeah, working I've heard out, about right? The study. Yeah, crazy, yeah. crazy, That's wild. You know, um, but I feel like you know it's all the mental benefits of you know delayed gratification and yeah. you know just working for something and knowing it's going to take a while. I feel like you, you can undercut yourself. So as your average Joe, you know, I don't think it's, it's necessary in that point. But then going off to body image is very interesting because you might think like, I'm not complete. Mm. I don't feel happy with myself until I've got 12 inch biceps. Yeah. Until I get that one extra. And we can, we're all guilty of this, you know. I'm like, you know, when you're, when you're pushing for the, the muscle up, you might be like, ah, oh, if only I had a muscle up, life would be great. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I'd be the happiest man on the planet. What happens when you get that muscle up? You're like, oh. You want the planche. Yeah, you want the planche. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, is that it? Like, yeah. you know, I need more. You know, it's just more in the journey than the destination. Yeah. And once you get those 12 inch biceps, you're going to quickly realize that, you know, it's not going to make you happy. Mm. You know, so we, we, we kind of lie to ourselves in that sense. Mm. And we think that other people care when, you know, like we said, we motivations for a lot of guys when they first start working out is probably to become more attractive to ladies, you know, yeah. or to guys, if you if you swing that way, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's to become a buff ting, right? But you'll quickly realize that you're going to get way more compliments for the guys, you know? Um, and, you know, nobody really cares if you have 12 inch biceps or if they do, like, you know, they're either your rival bodybuilder <laughs> or maybe you need to hang out with some different people, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're right. And I agree with the sentiment behind what you're saying, because it's very true. There are, I, I do feel like we, we live in a very, uh, what's the word? I don't want to use the word shallow because, well, I'll use it for the purpose of this conversation, but we do live in a very shallow world and people like, as much as you say that people don't care, I feel like a lot of people do acknowledge it though. And mm. whether or not they care about it, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't like impact their lives necessarily so maybe they don't care as much as like some someone else like because i don't know how do you measure how much someone cares about something you, you could yeah there are many ways but i feel like a lot of people do notice they'll notice it yeah yeah but they're not going to be like oh my god billy you don't have 12 inch biceps like Ew. yeah yeah well, exactly. if they are yeah, then yeah. then you shouldn't be hanging out with them yeah yeah you know? exactly 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 yeah but yeah, um, what's your what's your thoughts on body image? <laughs> um, I think that everyone actually, maybe I shouldn't say that, and not because I'm censoring myself, but let me just think before I speak. Yeah, yeah, take your time. Um, body image. I feel like a lot of the body image issues, as I've already said, are fueled by, for example, especially for men, like are fueled by yeah, a lot of bodybuilders going. And even a lot of film stars, a lot of film stars, they take steroids oh, yeah. to get in shape for a role. And they never say, oh yeah, I've taken a bunch of steroids to get in shape for this yeah, role. Yeah, it's just like, look at this actor's yeah, exactly. workout regime. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're going to look like Thor. That's literally it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen so many workouts like that. And yeah, I think it's it's the dishonesty that creates a lot of body image issues. Because I feel like if, if people knew that these guys were on steroids, they'd be like, right, okay. I might not look like them because I'm not on steroids or like I'm, I'm not going to be able to look like that because I'm not on steroids. And that's not a defeatist thing that will just help you to work within what's capable for you. Um, so yeah, I feel like a lot of body image issues come from people lying about whether they're natural or not. Um, but yeah, I feel like people ideally should strive to feel good within their skin. And how do you do that? You do that by getting in shape because <laughs> yeah people who get in shape they feel much better obviously like you do get like the kind of odd bit of body dysmorphia and like you look at yourself in the mirror and you go oh god i'm feeling really small today and that makes yeah. you feel a bit shit but overall you end up feeling much better about yourself and yeah conversely a lot of people who are overweight the, a lot of the time they tend not to feel very good about themselves yeah. and yeah it's like the solution to that is yeah just get in shape and you'll thank yourself you'll love yourself for that because you'll be like wow i've done that and i'm proud that i've done that and i feel great now. yeah so. that's nice i think it's also exacerbated by we live in such an interconnected society especially with social media mm. you know um you have access to all of these absolute gods of their fields you know yeah you can go on the internet and see 
hundreds of the most buff men you've ever seen in your life yeah. right all like roided up you know to their ears um, whereas like if we were back in I don't know just non-digital times yeah you know you'd, you'd have the people cool. around you in your village you know yeah. and there might yeah. be that one guy who's ex- you know a bit bigger yeah. and muscular but you don't have these extremes so readily available to compare yourself to you, know? you might have that cool. one guy at that circus who you saw one time in your life be like oh my god he can he's huge he's yeah. got a gigantic moustache yeah he can lift he's in his tiger skin leotards <laughs> and he can lift a gigantic dumbbell you know yeah but you don't have all of this like the extremes of humanity just at your fingertips yes which you're right we can obviously compare ourselves to that's a brilliant way of putting it the extremes of humanity at your fingertips yeah you're so right because it's like that on social media but with everything with everything not just fitness like literally yeah. anything you can think about yeah yeah you know I don't know, if you want to be the, the coolest cowgirl out there, you know, yeah. you're going to have all these cowgirls who are cooler than you. I've, I've, been, I've been watching loads of cowgirls right now. Yeah, I was like, where did that come from? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know, you got some, you're building a cabin in the woods. Guess what? There's some guy building a bigger cabin in the woods, you know, <laughs> like yeah. whatever, you know, you, you like painting your nails, like that will yeah. be someone painting cooler nails out there yeah, on, yeah. on Instagram, I guarantee you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? you're, you're fully right. Like, and when you do go on Instagram, yeah, you feel like everyone's like that. Yeah. But, and that's a good, that's, that's a good point because I say that to people. I'm like, all right, cool. You feel like, say if like, uh, I don't know, the people that I work out with are feeling small, they're feeling like, I don't know, they've put on some weight or whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. You go outside, bun Instagram, turn off Instagram, mm-hmm. go outside, see how many people look like you you will quickly realize that most people do not look like you. And that is because most people are not like the people that you see on Instagram, but because you're always on Instagram, like, and you're always seeing these people. And this is such a cliche, like everyone said this before. Yeah. This, is always, this has been done so many times, but it's true. Like, yeah, you go on Instagram, you think the whole world's like that. Like, you go on Instagram, everyone can hold a two finger planche. It's yeah. like, <laughs> when have yeah. you ever seen that in real life? That's true. I've never seen that in real life. Like, so it's like, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy so that is definitely a thing that does exacerbate the body image issues as well yeah yeah nice how did you get over or yeah how, how do you have you had any body image issues in the past like you know we all have those days when we're like oh, i'm not very small yeah oh, sorry i feel quite small today yeah you know and then you do some push-ups or a workout and then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like i feel huge <laughs> yeah. right but like how, how do you wrestle with it that's how it really you be know? boy you just get that one two pump you're like yeah, yeah yeah i'm that guy and then when the pump fades you're like oh god oh i'm nothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah I have had body image issues before, um, which I don't really have now because I've worked on my physique. But yeah, especially like before I started working out, like I was just mad skinny. I never used to take off my shirt at the beach, for example, because I was just, I felt too skinny. Um, And then I started working out and then now you can barely see me with a shirt on. And yeah, that's just that's because, facts. That's facts. Yeah. The first time I saw you, you, <laughs> you skated up to Hyde Park shirtless, and I was like, "That's that's my guy." Standard procedure. Yeah. Yes, the shirtless. I thought you did like a three sixty spin as well or something. Like, <laughs> it was sick. Yeah, and um, yeah, like that's yeah. I, I did have that, but even when I first started working out, like, and I started kind of getting more and more into building my physique, like, yeah, I just wasn't building all the muscle that all of these steroided up dons were telling me that I could build like they were like yeah man do like 15 reps of this like tricep extension so I was there just banging out 15 reps going oh this will grow my muscles I'll look like him but the reason why he looks like that and the reason why he can build so much muscle off of 15 reps is because he's on steroids and I just didn't know that at the time so it was like it would really bog me down because I'm like oh god I'm doing everything this guy says but I just don't look even like close to this guy and that's because he's on steroids so yeah um I yeah I have had body image have you had body image issues I think everyone does to some extent yeah um what helps me I think you know you can get too obsessive with obviously like we like to see numbers go up if you're doing weightlifting you like to see that you're obviously making progress but I think with bodybuilding or if you're training for size that's when you can get it in your mind Mm. and it it can become unhealthy yeah because obviously we want to get bigger and there's nothing wrong with that at all but if like I said earlier if you're like you know I want my biceps to be that much bigger and Mm. then I'll be happy like you're 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 on a path to failure you know and mental anguish yeah um but what i think i love about calisthenics is because you can focus on a skill and you can i i I trust you know i'm like i will be as big as i need to be to do a muscle up if i do can do muscle ups i'm not gonna not be buff exactly right and like if i can do a planche i'm gonna have a set amount of muscle yeah you know a minimum yeah so i i just trust in that and i focus on the 
getting these different moves down mm -hmm. and uh, that's how I how I, I avoid it exactly I think in calisthenics you can gravitate towards two physiques maybe mm -hmm. or you have a super skinny yeah in which case you can do loads of pull-ups you know like say when I was 16 years old I think I weighed there was one point maybe when I was 15 I don't know I was super skinny shredded right shredded eight pack at least like You're I'm not even shredded now that. yeah but I, I mean this, this is crazy right yeah yeah but I was like 48 kilograms right? yeah 15 years old 48 kilograms right it was so unhealthy. I'd literally just eat vegetables. People would say like, oh, Jamie, you got some more rabbit food for lunch. And I was like, yeah, you're goddamn right, dude. Like a little bird. Look at my abs. Like, yeah. Um, and then I was like, oh, I don't want to bulk up because then I lose my abs. But yeah. I was like, I was a pencil, so it didn't yeah, count, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I'm sure, you know, at that stage, like doing calisthenics, like it would probably would have been easier to do like planches and yeah. pull-ups and stuff. But as you put on more weight, obviously it's all relative when it comes to body weight exercises. Yeah. But you're heavier in and of yourself because you've got more muscle. Yeah. So that means that doing more pull up, 10 pull-ups when you're super shredded compared to when you've got more muscle on you, yeah. it's going to be harder yeah. when you're heavier. Definitely. And then I think that's when you can gravitate towards a, a bulkier or yeah. just a more well-muscled physique yeah. with calisthenics. Yeah. Um, so I'd always say to anyone if, if, if you're super skinny, um, just focus on building muscle and strength first. Even if you're like a bit on the bigger side, if you're morbidly obese, lose weight first. Mm. But generally, I'd say to people, focus on getting buffer first because then when you cut down, you'll actually have something to cut down to. And then you can eat more as well. But it depends on what your goal is though. Yeah. Like why, why would That's you true. suggest getting bigger first rather than learning? And this is not a criticism, mm. oh, this yeah, is yeah, just yeah. a genuine question. Mm. Um, why would, yeah why not learn the calisthenics skills first before worrying about size? Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's true. I was going more from a, if you're doing weights, I just fell into that mindset. Okay. If you're doing calisthenics, focus on your skills yeah. and just trust that the, the muscles will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's there. Thanks for picking up on that. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. If you're just doing weights, listen to what I just said. But <laughs> um, if you're doing calisthenics, just trust in the trust in the process. Yeah, because that's the thing about calisthenics, which is really cool. Like, And that gives you a great sense of confidence as well because you don't have to be the biggest guy in the gym, but you can bet your bottom dollar that you'll be stronger, when it, especially when it comes to the body weight stuff, you'll be stronger than the biggest guy in the gym if you can do calisthenics like and if you can do calisthenics to an advanced level yeah you're going to be one of the strongest guys in the gym yeah um and you don't have to be super big and that's another really cool thing about calisthenics so yeah it gives you that that confidence it gives you that freedom as well um and it kind of gives you that like it avoids a lot of those body image issues funnily enough because you don't have to be obsessed about being the biggest guy you can just be the strongest yeah. and yeah, you it's relative strength, right? Exactly, it's not yeah. absolute strength. Exactly, that's yeah. the biggest guy in the gym. But, yeah, and I guess in that sense, everyone. It is nice if you go into a regular gym and you do a muscle up. You know, people are there like, "Holy oh, shit! Oh yeah, my yeah. god, did you see that guy?" Like, yeah, yeah. You know, and it, you're like, "Yeah, I'm that guy," because <laughs> like we all were the guys watching that guy at yes, one point. Exactly. And you're like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So obviously, it's nice as well. Yeah. Just as a little ego boost I exactly guess. and i thrive off of that like yeah. i'm not i'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be i feel <laughs> i feel like there's yeah there's this whole thing on the internet at the moment of like there's a reversal like when when bodybuilding like with guys like z's and with mm. guys like who are into like the whole like chest day bra like yeah. that kind of vibe like that was all about like partying that was all about like getting big to attract women and all this kind of stuff and like now i feel like it's evolved to a point where everyone's like, well, we're not doing this for women anymore. We're not doing this for like... Um, we have pump cover. Yeah, we're, we're, not, we're, yeah. Not, we're not doing this for, for the flash. We're not doing this for the show. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I don't like find enjoyment when I am doing muscle-ups in the gym and people are looking at me and they're going, wow, this, so, this is so cool. Like, look yeah. at this guy. Yeah. Uh, I, I do derive enjoyment from that. And that's obviously my ego talking, of course. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, yeah, it's like of course you're going to feel good if like you're doing stuff like that and people are like wow that's really cool coming up to you shaking your hand going wow like well done kind of thing like so yeah um i do i do do it for that reason as well yeah i think yeah. as long as it's a cherry on the cake exactly as, yeah, yeah. as long as it's not the main if that's the main thing yeah you know you need to find some fulfillment within. <laughs> but as an extra bonus yeah, it's fine, exactly right? exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nice Cool. Another thing we wanted to chat about that oh, you yeah. suggested as a cue. Oh, yeah. I chatted to my um, send it to Nick, send it to Dom, send it to my Rachel. Got their takes on it as well. Is uh, you said the thoughts on the the ideology and the term behind the statement. It's okay for men to cry. <laughs> Bit of a side change, but what's your thoughts? Do you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I've been through the whole spectrum, as in 
I've been through the whole, like, when I was at school, I went to a very rough school. Mm. And I'm not going to pretend like I was one of the roughest kids there, but I went to a rough school and it was like, you couldn't be emotional in that kind of school. Because if you were, people would just rinse you and they would, yeah, they would actually fuck you up. Like not even, I'm not talking like, oh, they would pick on you and call your names. Like they'll just beat you up. And that was the kind of school that it was physically very violent. There were fights every day. People were getting stabbed outside the school. People getting robbed outside the school. Like it was, yeah, it was... It was a mad school, but it was actually, ironically, one of the best times of my life. Like, it was just brilliant. Like, I, I loved the school that I went to. But the point is, is that you couldn't be soft. You couldn't be... So some people will say, oh, yeah, that's toxic masculinity. Like, you're suppressing your emotions. You can't be... You can't say how you feel. You can't do all this kind of stuff. But it, it's interesting because I then went to university and then I got depressed. Like, I was going through depression and that happened for various reasons but I got really depressed and then at the same time I kind of got depressed like that was when a lot of these kind of like ideologies were kind of becoming a bit more mainstream about like oh it's okay for men to cry it's all oh you know be in touch with your feelings it's okay and I was like oh maybe maybe that is all right like maybe maybe I should start crying more and like so then I just kind of got into all of that but what happened was it made me completely impotent. And I'm not talking like physically, like I'm not talking about erectile oh, dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was still working out great. <laughs> but what I'm talking about is like, just it made me just so, I, could, I couldn't function. Like I was just so miserable and sad and just like, I just felt weak and pathetic. And I was being told that indulging in that was like a good thing. But really, I couldn't get anything done. Like, a lot of my workouts were fueled by kind of like, at, especially at the time, like anger and all that kind of stuff. But like, I felt like at least if I was like angry, which is apparently toxic masculinity, and it depends on how you channel that anger. But I feel like if you're channeling it, channeling it into something that's good, then ultimately, yeah, like I felt like very testosterone up, very angry at stuff. So I just take it all out on the weights, take it all out on my workouts. And that would fuel me. But when I started indulging in that whole, oh, it's okay for men to cry kind of thing, I couldn't work out in the same way. Like, and I couldn't achieve the same things that I wanted to achieve. I didn't have the same level of drive because I just felt too, just shit and impotent and just like, yeah, rubbish. So it was interesting to go through that. So now I'm on the other side of that. And now I think I've, I've reversed my opinion on that. Of course, Ideally, you shouldn't really be suppressing your emotions because just basic psychology, if you suppress anything, it can like build up and bubble up and yep. just like explode out in the wrong way. But at the same time, I do feel like there's a certain level of, let's say stoicism, a certain level of kind of just like, yeah, like man up, brave it kind of thing that men should have. Otherwise, you're just not really, you're just not really going to get anywhere. Mm. Like... And you're not going to have the same drive. If you're always just sad, if you're always just despondent, you're just sitting in your room crying, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to get anywhere. So, yeah, that's my opinion on that now. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think that's also in your, in your time when you were more in the, you know, crying a lot phase? Did you, does that play into a sense of like a victim mentality when you're like, oh, the world's out to get me? Like, do you, did you feel more disempowered with your own ability to change your life for the better? Or... Yes, I would say so. Yeah. But I didn't ever really have like the super victim mentality, like the world was out to get me. I did at some points, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I definitely did feel very incapable and very just like weak and yeah, powerless, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Nice. When I mentioned it to my mates, because it was really interesting that you, you, you thought of that as a cue, and I was very excited to, to jump into it. We thought, basically, I mean, you can always say it depends, mm -hmm. you know, um, but we want some, we want something more than that. It depends. Yeah. Um, me and Don came to the conclusion, or just from our quick chat, we were like, okay, situations in which it'd be fine, you know, let's say you're at a funeral or someone's died, you know, and it's the appropriate time to grieve, cry, you yeah. know, let it out. Or, or if, if you're with the homies, you know, and you're with your friends and like, guys, I'm going for a rough patch, like, you know going to the problem you know like you should be able to cry in front of your homies you know yeah. um, but apart from that like if it's a crisis situation right let's say you're in you're in caveman times 
and a bear has just mauled your homie in front of your eyes, <laughs> right? And you've got your other you've got your other hunting mates around you. That's not the time to burst into tears. Yeah. That's the time to like kick some ass and exactly. like, you know, man up, quote quote. Yeah. Um, you know. And then afterwards, once you're giving you the burial, then you, you can cry. Yeah. Right. But there's a time and a place, you yeah. know. So you give yourself that time to to grieve. Yeah. But don't wallow it in it too long. Exactly. You know? That's the key. Don't wallow in it. Like you cry and then, you know, yeah, if you, you need to, if you feel like you've got to cry, then do it. Like, but don't wallow in it. That yeah. is, it, when it's when you start wallowing in it, it just sucks you down even further, and you just become too impotent, and you just can't, you just can't do, you just can't do anything. No, no, no. yeah, it's 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 terrible. Um, so yeah, I I do believe there's balance, like anything, like mm. yeah, you if you don't suppress off your emotions too much to the point where you just just melt down, um, but also equally know like you said know the times when manning up firm in it is the better solution and the more productive solution because you're not productive if you're being sad like you, you can't be productive when you're being sad it's just too yeah. much of a negative emotional state to do anything in so yeah nice and then the other thing what would your thoughts be let's say you're dating someone or you're in a relationship at what point is it appropriate to cry in front of your, your significant <laughs> other? Because I wouldn't say all the time. Because I, I, I think it's interesting. That's one of the caveats Dom and I had. We were like, cry yeah. in front of the homies? Maybe not. Not saying you should never cry in front of your spouse. Yeah. Because I think that's bad. Yeah. You know, I think you should be able to. But you shouldn't be doing it every day. Because that's going to be a major turnoff. Like, you need to, you need to secure... You need to make your, your significant other feel safe and reassured. Yeah. You know, that's one of your duties as a man. Yeah, this, um, is, this, is, this is an interesting one. You, know? you need to be the rock, right? Yeah, exactly. When all shit's going, you know. Yeah. When a bear has entered your camp and your mm-hmm. wife and kids are like, oh my God, bear! Yeah. You, you can't be there like, oh! That's right? what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you yeah. have to be like, okay, kick some ass, right? Yeah, yeah. You might be able to, like, afterwards, once the bear's dead, you might be like, oh my God, that was really scary. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, like, that's, this is an interesting one. And... I find it okay what I will say is based on my experience I have found that if you open up too much and if you are too emotionally vulnerable it's kind of almost like like the woman loses respect for you it's really yeah. weird like yeah, yeah. it's like you you and this is not just an this is not my isolated experience like I've spoken to my friends about this mm-hmm. they've they've uh experience the same thing i even spoke to my dad about it because i was i was wondering like is this just like a me thing or is this what is this so i spoke to my dad about it and yeah he said that yeah that's a thing like yeah. he's he's experienced that i'd fall like, that yeah huh? yeah i'd say so as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it's it's, it's it's really interesting because at the same time while you have society saying oh well you know it's all right for men to cry and oh let's get rid of toxic masculinity and all this kind of stuff as soon as a man starts crying or breaks down in a certain type of way then some people are like, oh, he's pathetic, he's this, he's that. Yeah. So it's like, but by saying, oh, he's pathetic or even just like changing your attitude towards them, surely then you are reinforcing the ideals of quote unquote toxic masculinity because you really think that they should be completely emotionless and you really think that they should be stoic all the time and that they shouldn't be breaking down in front of you like this. Like, so it's interesting that that's the case um and i'm not really a relationship kind of person i've only had a handful um like maybe two or three relationships like so maybe again i'm speaking from a position that isn't necessarily like i haven't been in a long enough term relationship with someone to be like okay cool like I feel comfortable enough to break down in front of them or whatever, or like cry in front of them, or whatever. Mm. And because we've been going out for so long, they are just like, yeah, it's all right. They're not going to be like, oh, you. Yeah. What's this? So I, I don't know whether that's, that is the case, but in the isolated incidents that I've had, like even, yeah, when I've been going out with someone for a, for a length of time, yeah, like I've noticed that. Mm. I've noticed if you do open up in that kind of way as a guy, like, yeah, it's kind yeah. of like you, you, you notice a shift. Yeah. Do you think... I mean, if it's tears of happiness, you know, let's say you haven't seen them for years. <laughs> yeah. Or it's been ages or something. Right. You know, I think then it's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's fine. We're talking yeah. about tears of negativity. Here, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Tears of negativity. That sounds like a, a metal band. Yeah. Damn. Mad. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your thought? Could you open up too much positively? I mean, you certainly can. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your thoughts? Because sometimes, like, it's, it's funny. Because if you're too, if you're too, like, 
saccharine, saccharine, if that's the word. If you're just too like, like too, uh, what's the word? Um, intense. Too intense. Too. Uh, there's another word that I'm looking for, but let's use the word intense. Yeah. If you're too intense, it can kind of drive someone away. Yeah. So there is a balance to be had as well. Like you kind of do have to fall back a little bit. And sometimes, like if you give them everything, then they kind of they value it less because yeah, exactly. it's 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 kind of like supply and demand. Exactly. Yeah. Like for real. Um. And yeah, if you're giving them everything, they just kind of expect it as a given, and then they start respecting you less a little bit. So it's kind of like yeah, we, there's that game that you got to play as well. Yeah. Um. It's long. <laughs> It is long. It's long. <laughs> I've been chatting with my mates and they're like, man, like, you know, I really like someone. Yeah. This has turned into a dating conversation now. But they're like, <laughs> man, like, I really like someone, but I have to hold back because I know that whenever yeah. I, you do open up more, like, yeah, like you said, people lose interest. Yeah. yeah. You have to, you know, if you're not that, if you're a scarce man, you know, you're not available that much. Like, people want to hang out with you more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because they know that it's, it's like, oh, like, if you know, that I, I'm guilty of this with my my flatmates, you know, the past couple of years I've lived with like lovely, fantastic people, you know, some of my best mates, but because you see them every day in the kitchen, mm. it's easy to not make the effort to hang out yeah. in an actual hanging out setting. Yeah. Cause you're like, okay, we'll hang out in the kitchen. Yeah. And obviously you can still have a great time hanging out in the kitchen, but you can then go the whole year and be like, damn, we never even went out for coffee, you yeah. know, and like hang out. Yeah. Um, I think the same is true in relationship setting in that sense. I think so. Yeah, and it's it's a funny one as well because ideally on paper that's what you would want. You yeah. would want someone to continually profess their love and desire for you and all that kind of stuff. But when it happens, it's kind of like uh, it becomes devalued in some kind of way. And I there's a part of me that wants to say like I feel like sometimes like if I'm a guy and I'm saying how much I like a girl and all that kind of stuff, like it kind of sometimes it can feel unfair that that can drive a woman away. Yeah. Um, but I've been, it's, 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 I've had the shoe on the other foot where like girls have been like really like intense and been like, Oh, I really, really like you so much. And it's driven me away. Yeah. So it's, it's like, um, it's a weird, I think, yeah, uh, it is weird, but I've had the same thing. Yeah. Where I'm like, Ooh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I don't know if that's like a human nature thing or maybe because guys like just a... don't experience that the majority of the time. They don't get it until you, <laughs> until you, you but then you would it, think right? like, then you would think that it's, it's, you would love it even more. Yeah. But it ultimately, I think what it boils down to is who it's coming from. Yeah. Cause that's if, true. Yeah. If it came from like your, I don't know, the person you got the fastest crush on. Yeah. You'd be like, hell yeah. 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 Then then you, it, yeah. yeah. If it's coming from a widow, you're like, Ugh. <laughs> you know? if it's just coming from some, yeah, from some girl that you're just really not attracted to, it's just going to be like, allow it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, if it's coming from, yeah, someone that you've really, really liked and like, they're just saying it then, yeah. But even then, like sometimes you, you see that, like people get into relationships with people who they really, really like and then it's kind of like, yeah, they end up kind of, I don't know, falling out, not falling out of love, but like, yeah, it just gets too... Fizzling out. Yeah, fizzles out because the guy's just doing everything for the woman or vice versa and it's kind of just like the woman or the guy just wants someone with a bit more of a backbone or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's... What do you think people mean by that? Because I'm, I'm an agreeable guy. I'm t- if I have a fatal character trait, it's that I'm too agreeable, <laughs> man. You know? Yeah. So that's something I, I definitely always need to work on. Well, um, after, I'll make... I'll make myself have difficult conversations. Like, I won't avoid them. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. Like, I feel you know? like... I feel like because obviously, like you, you're like I don't want anyone to like not like me, right? yeah, yeah. And I'm not. I used to be way more of a people pleaser. I'll say no to people now. You know, I can do it with grace and style, yeah, etc. But you know, I'm always like, oh, it, it's it's like a it's an effort to do, yeah, right, yeah. And because my instinct is just to make friends with everyone. Yeah, I think again, as I've said many times, mm. like it's about balance because yeah. I I feel like people and i was going to say i feel like women respect but i'll say people in general because people in general do people in general respect it when you respect yourself so if you are the kind of person who will just bend over at every whim that your partner has and will just drop everything and do whatever they say they're not going to respect that because ultimately you're not really respecting yourself like say if you had something that you needed to do during the day and like it was of major significance to you and then your partner rings up and she's like oh come and pick me up now like come and come and pick me up and rub my feet while you're driving or something like, that. <laughs> like yeah. just like just demanding things off of you and then you go oh okay yeah oh, i'll turn around from the really important thing that i was about to go into it's okay oh, i'll come yeah. like this 
they're not, they won't respect that because you're not respecting yeah. yourself. Yeah. So I feel like you said, like, what does like having a backbone mean? Like, just respecting yourself. Um, and obviously, there's always like compromise. There's always, um, yeah, it's it's not being arrogant or too egotistical, and it's not like being too tyrannical either. Like, but it's just respecting yourself enough to in, to put up boundaries where, yeah, it's like if you if you feel like you if you feel like someone's kind of like imposing a new boundary in a way that yeah, you don't they're like, they're treading on your toes. Yeah, then yeah. just say it, but obviously in a nice way, yeah. and just be like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. Like, yeah. and I feel like a lot of guys are afraid to do that because they feel like because girls are hard to get for guys. Yeah. Like, yeah, for girls, girls can get guys easily. Like, they just just go out on the street, guys will come up to you. But for guys, yeah. it's harder to attract a woman. So it's like, I feel like a lot of guys are afraid to. So like once you've got someone's interest, you're like, I don't want to do anything that's like, maybe they then won't like me, right? Exactly. That's, that's the trap guys fall into. Exactly. And right? they don't want to lose them because yeah. it's hard to get them. But so. then because you're being a wet wipe. Exactly. Then you end up turning people off. Exactly. So yeah, it's that, there's that balance. And women respect it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you stand up for yourself and, or you just like, you're just like, no, I'm going to do this. Like if they're like, oh, do this for me and it's unreasonable and you're like, no, <laughs> then... Yeah, they were like, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they're not going to run away because yeah. you said no. I think people will catastrophize in their mind. Yeah. About like, oh my God, no, she's going to turn into a dragon and yeah. eat me or something. I don't know. Yeah. You know, but yeah, they'll be like, yeah. But yeah. How, how would you... Oftentimes people are like, oh, it's about setting up boundaries, etc. But they'll never say how. Yeah. People always leave out the how. <laughs> how. How would you... If somebody, if you felt like someone was treading on toes, it could be anything. Yeah. You know, in a relationship setting or anything, what would you... Like, I can say, give an example just of, like, a one-time interaction, but mm. um, that sounds dodgy. <laughs> I was in the cinema last week with my mate watching Avatar, oh, yeah. and there were some guys behind us who were just on the phone, bare loud during oh, the middle yeah. of the film. And it happened once, and I was like, <laughs> you know, people were looking around like, oh, gosh, what's yeah. that? And it happened the second time, and I was like, oh, man, this sucks, right? And, like, back in the past, I might have just been like, ooh, yeah. this is probably some scary road, man, like, ooh. <laughs> But then the third time, I was like, I have, a, I have a rule of three when things happen like that. And I just went up to him and I was like, yeah, man, I, I just signed, you know, I was like, phone, like, you know, cut it out, <laughs> you know, and like, that was it. Yeah, and then yeah. afterwards, he was probably shocked that somebody actually came up and spoke to him yeah, yeah. about it, you yeah. know, but it was simple as that. But... What, what an asshole. Yeah. Who's answering their phone? In... Bare loud. That's what I'm saying. Film. In you paid to go in there. Big, big Avatar 3. Wait, is it Avatar 3 or Avatar, Avatar 2? 2? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big Avatar 2. Like it hasn't been like a decade since the last one. Exactly. Came out. Everyone's exactly. excited to see it, and you're there just exactly. doing up phone calls and the, the, allow it. Allow yeah. It. What an inconsiderate piece of excrement. Yeah. He is. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So how would you go about um, establishing boundaries? How? Oh, it's so context. Oh, see, it is. Yeah. Like that's maybe why a lot of people don't go into the how. But yeah. I feel like if you. I mean, there are some boundaries that you can establish before you, you, there are some boundaries that you can establish before anything happens so that that way people already have an idea of things to expect, um, and they can move accordingly. Yeah. Um, those are the kinds of boundaries that just help to keep things like working well. Um, but then later on, like say if they do something that you, that doesn't really resonate with you then you can just say, like, I, I'd, I'd advise probably just, and this is coming from a guy who doesn't really get into relationships, so lol, taking <laughs> advice from, from someone like this, but uh, me personally, like, just, I feel like this is applicable to a lot of relationships, like platonic relationships as well, just nip it in the bud, like, if someone yeah. does something that, yeah, you don't agree with, just nip it in the bud in a, in a nice way, in a respectful yeah. way, just be like, alright, cool, I didn't really like that you did that, um, and then that way that boundary set. So next yeah. time they might not do that because, and they're definitely going to think twice about doing it and they probably mm. won't do it because you've already said that you just nipped it in the bud. Um, yeah. So that's I think a, yeah, nip it in the bud. Yeah. And, and then you've just set up that boundary and then you've yeah. got that there. So, yeah. and then likewise, if you do something that pisses them off, they can just be like, well, I didn't yeah. like the fact that you did that. And you'd be like, fair enough. Cool. Yeah, All exactly. Right. And I think a lot of the time people are so scared about hurting, not hurting someone, but turning someone off because you're like oh I'm showing some negative emotion towards someone maybe yeah. they won't be my friend or they yeah. won't like me yeah. I think that means a lot of people don't bring up these things yeah. at least if you're an agreeable guy or girl that's definitely the case because agreeable people they might be all cheerful but I was talking about there's many agreeable people and like you'll always have some resentment 
from that. You're like, oh man, I wish I said this to this person, that to that person. Yeah. And this thing really annoys me, but you know, I don't want to rock the boat, so I'm never going to say it. Yeah. You know, and like that's such a bad mindset to have. Yeah. You know, because you do need to rock the boat, and like you just rock it once. You know, at the start, like yeah. a little rock. You don't have to t- capsize the boat. Yeah. Metaphorically. You know, um, but yeah, and you know, just say like, oh, when when this happened, I felt X Y Z. You don't need to be like, you piece of shit. <laughs> like, don't you dare do that again. Like, you know, you just yeah. be like, oh, you know, that was a bit peak. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, exactly. Simple as. But I'm definitely guilty of like playing up worse in my head. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and it's scary, like, because it's it's a form of confrontation, even if it is yeah. kind of tiny. Like, it's yeah, like, and most people are conflict averse, so. Yeah. Yeah, it stresses them out, the idea of it. And, but it's just something that's necessary. Yeah. Like, you've got to say it, otherwise it just gets swept under the rug and then the rug just keeps getting piled up with shit underneath it and then eventually it all spills out. So, yeah. you might as well try to nip it in the bud exactly. like, at the beginning. Yeah, that's mad. Cool. And what's your thoughts? We, we touched on toxic masculinity. What's your thoughts on the term? I personally don't like it. Because um... I always think if you flip something on its head... You know, you could say there's such things as toxic femininity, but I just don't think that's a helpful statement to have around. I think it puts the blame on, you know, you're like, oh, it makes it, it gives me the impression at least, you know, women are toxic or men are toxic. And I'm like, no, like, we're all great, you know? There are some things not that typically all of us. More, Yeah, not all of us. <laughs> not all of us by any stretch of the means. Yeah. But, like, generally, like, we're fine. And there are some traits that are typically more masculine or feminine that are not the very nice in certain yeah. contexts. You know, like there are certainly nasty ways in which men can be, or generally men, or a more masculine way of being antisocial, you know, like physical violence. But then mm. there's also more typically feminine ways of being very nasty, like gossip, you know, that I've seen firsthand, mm. you know, and they're more feminine. Yeah. It's more women who engage in them. But mm. I'm not going to say toxic femininity because I think that just makes it out that it's only women who could do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, What's your thoughts? My thoughts on Toskic, to, Toskic, <laughs> on Tosin Abassi, the famous guitar player. <laughs> um, my, for, my thoughts on toxic masculinity. Um, I feel like some of the things that are labelled as being toxic masculinity are toxic. And some of the things... Would that, you give examples? Oh god, I don't even really keep up to date. I've, I've beating stopped. up people for their much money <laughs> because you feel insufficient. I and you were bullied as a child. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even really keep up to date with all of this stuff because I find a lot yeah, of this stuff draining. just trivial and boring because yeah. it's all been said to death and it's all just people just say the same things and nothing even really ever gets resolved. So it's just like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. and all it does is just generate more frustration. Um, so yeah I don't even really keep up to date I, I suppose things like um, I don't know aggression would be seen as like a toxic masculine trait but sometimes aggression is good because yeah. sometimes you need to be aggressive in this so when I said earlier like if you if you want to like sometimes you get the best workouts in if you're yeah. angry <laughs> yeah, that's true. like I've had some of the best workouts ever when I was just pissed off yeah. and people would be like oh you're that's being a toxic male oh you're angry it's like well but what am I choosing to do with that anger I'm choosing yeah. to put it into something that's actually beneficial um, and I don't think that's very toxic yeah. So, or if somebody's physically threatening you or your loved ones like you need to be aggressive exactly you point. have to they're yeah. like a mum bear you yeah. know? but you're a daddy bear so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so you have to yeah there are times where aggression is warranted and it's not just a flat out like oh god he's being a oh man oh god it's just like so yeah that's that's an example yeah yeah nice cool wild <laughs> is there anything else you're, you're keen on, on touching on I want to talk a bit about food okay because like we've talked a lot about like obviously exercise yeah but abs are made in the kitchen as they say mm. so I'm curious what, what do you eat on a regular basis I eat I could eat better because I don't eat enough vegetables and fruit <laughs> yeah. but I eat basically it's literally just meat and carbs and obviously whatever fat is in the meat and mm. whatever fat is in like the oil that I cook with or whatever um, and whatever fat is in the I don't know carbs but there's not really that much fat and carbs but either way yeah it's basically just meat and carbs and some vegetables on the side and it's as simple as that a lot of people you 
Mm, that's a little burp there. <laughs> oh, and another one. Tasty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Two for one. Yeah, buddy. Um, <laughs> a lot of people, there's a lot of rubbish online as there is for pretty much anything, but especially when it comes to diet, like you get people who just spread all of this rubbish about, oh, you have to be on this diet, you have to do this, you have to eat this many times a day, or you don't have to eat this many times a day. Go on the paleo diet, go on the Atkins diet, go on, be vegan. It's just like, if you want to build muscle, all you need to do is this. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Oh, listen up, guys. <laughs> you, yes. you already know how to do it, but I'm going to tell the people listening how to do it. All you need to do is just eat a lot of protein, a moderate amount of carbohydrates, and some fats, but the fats will be naturally in the in the meat that you eat or whatever. The fats will be in, yeah, the oils that you cook with and all that kind of stuff, and veg. So the, the formula is high protein, moderate carbs, vegetables. Vegetables just for the vitamins and minerals because obviously your body needs all of that. That's it. So that's the plate. So imagine that. Plate number one of your day should be high protein, some carbs, and maybe some veg, but if it's breakfast, maybe some fruit. So for example, in the morning, I'll have eggs. That's the high protein element. I'll also have the eggs with some toast. That is the carb element. And of course, the fat is in the oils that I'm cooking with. I've, I've cooked with like coconut oil or olive oh. oil or whatever. So Extra yeah. virgin coconut oil. <laughs> Class. Class. So yeah, so the fat gives you lots of calories which you need to grow as well. But yeah, the protein, the carbs and the fat, they're there. Um, if I, I'm not going to lie and pretend I have vegetables and fruit with every meal. I don't. But yeah, the key elements, the protein and the carbs are there. That's meal number one. Then they say that you should have three square meals a day. So that's a good start. If you're eating that, if you stick into that formula, high carbs, moderate protein, some veg, three times a day, and you're working out consistently, you will build the muscle. Like you're, you're just going to. So I I'm, I'm, I have, yeah, eggs and toast in the morning or eggs and porridge like I had this morning. Lunchtime, again, same formula, protein. I'll have a chicken breast. Pasta, there's the carbs. Kale, there's the vegetable. Protein, high protein, chicken breast, moderate amount of carbs in the pasta, and then the kale. Dinner time, guess what it is? <laughs> it's protein, carbs, and veg. It's the same thing, and I eat the same shit every day, and I just do that. And if I, if I want to bulk, then I'll have more of it, because that's the thing. Like, if you're bulking, you wanna, if you're in the gym, increase the weight, and if you're uh, watching your diet, eat more food high like heavy weights more food that's the key if you're doing calisthenics hard calisthenics exercises that you can only do seven to ten reps of or one to five reps of i would stay especially if you're a beginner stay more in the seven to ten range but yeah. hard calisthenics exercises that you can only do a maximum of 10 reps of and eat a lot that's all you need so for, for a lot of people three meals a day just using that same formula protein carbs veg that's enough like that's what i've been doing for ages now but if you want to build up more size, then just have another plate. So I'll have three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. But if I want to really bulk, then I'll have breakfast, lunch, and then I'll have either a meal in between lunch and dinner, yeah. or I'll have a meal after dinner. But it's just another, it's just another meal. What and do you have in that meal? Oh, <laughs> I wonder if they can guess at home. <laughs> Again, high protein, moderate carbs, veg. Would and you make it like a dessert thing if it was after dinner? Or would you just have a second plate of your dinner? I would just have a second plate. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's yeah. Because you just want to eat loads. Like, if you want to get big, especially if you're the kind of person who's naturally skinny, you just oh, want to yeah. eat a lot. I think that's you. Like, yeah. I struggle to put on weight. Yeah. It's yeah, always, yeah. I can lose it. Easy peasy. But. Exactly. Yeah. And inversely, if you want to cut weight, then high protein, small amount of carbs, veg. It's that yeah. simple. Yeah, but, I'd always just, yeah, increase the amount of veg. Yeah, exactly. Or you can exactly have no carbs and just have veg. I mean, I I prefer to have at least some carbs. Oh, yeah, I do. Because they're good for energy and stuff like that. Yeah, they're tasty. Um, exactly. And then they taste nice. And I don't want to just, like, mi live in misery just eating, yeah, meat and veg all day. But, yeah, so, again, you would just reduce the amount of carbs or reduce the amount of meals. Um, or both. So yeah, that's the that's the key. Nice. Oh, I had a good point. I've forgotten it. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, something to do with food plates, 
portions. Um, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> building muscle. But yeah, oh, that was what I was gonna say. One extra hack I have. I mean, I'll put like say olive oil on my, on my pasta and stuff okay. just to, to get more calories in. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll often douse my my food in olive oil, <laughs> or um, yeah, I do like to swim with my oil. Um, <laughs> and then also, depending on whether you're trying to gain weight, lose weight, weight etc. I will change what, what color milk I'm drinking. <laughs> so at the moment, I'm a blue milk boy. Oh, yeah. I'm on that full fat goodness. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if I was like trying to lose weight or just be more skinny, um, I would go, yeah, for like a green or maybe a red one or like yeah. soy milk or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's I find that's an easy way. soy milk. I used to be like, for a couple of years, I was just fully on soy milk. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. And then when I'd have like dairy milk, I just found it quite like rich yeah but now uh last year i tried not for long go mad like gallon of milk a day because that's eight pints yeah but i started with four and then i went up to six because i wasn't i still don't buy any protein powder at the moment just because yeah. i don't know i really should but um milk's the cheapest source of protein <laughs> and i was like then i can stay hydrated as well yeah and i don't think i noticed it day to day but looking back after my my milk thon last year <laughs> like I, I was feeling well i looked I did, I did put on some weight um i was quite happy with yeah um how does your stomach handle that though? I had like two pints in the morning. Yeah. Um, just for breakfast. Just in my smoothie and stuff. And then, you know, the remainder just as a drink. Um, I'd have two just throughout the day from just around the flat. And then I'd have like two at night. And what, you're not like diarrhea you're not... Oh no, obviously if you're lactose intolerant, don't do this. But um, yeah. but no, I was fine. Um, there was a Tesco right next to where I lived, so... I could just walk past it every day. So. I thought you were going to say, there was a Tesco right next to where I live, so I would just go and shit there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought you were going in that direction. Yeah, it, was, it, was good. it was good. It was good. So that's my, my tip. Yes. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, milk, man, doesn't agree with my stomach. Okay. I, I get the squits if I drink milk. Do you go for soy milk then? No, I, do, I drink either cashew. Cashew is quite nice. Oh. Cashew milk. Um, almond milk. Uh, and or what's the other one? Rice. Oat? No, oat milk. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, milk. if you have oat milk in por- porridge, why don't you just put water in it? Like, <laughs> you're already making oat milk for it. Like. <laughs> yeah, no, I could. But yeah, water with porridge though, that's like, that's a real, that's a real struggle milk. And yeah. That's water with porridge. That's bad. Nah, okay. Me. I know one guy, who, I won't name names. I'm not going <laughs> to shame him like that. Um, <laughs> Expose him. He, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he just doesn't like milk. Yeah, I think he's lactose intolerant, yeah. right? But he just doesn't like any of the replacement milks. So he has his Cheerios with oh, water. Oh, don't piss me off. <laughs> I'm like, that is a sin. Oh, that is a sin. That's so bothers, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember doing that. <laughs> like, if there was no milk left and, yeah, money was running low when we were growing up, yeah, yeah I remember, like, yeah, putting water in porridge or... Yeah. Like even in watering down the last bit of milk and cereal, but I would never do that voluntarily. That is clapped. Yeah, it's rough, <laughs> man. Struggle meals. Yeah, trust me, man. You heard about struggle loaf. Struggle loaf. Yeah. No, what's that? Struggle loaf. No, what's that? What's that? <laughs> that is uh, where you get a loaf of bread, and then you turn the TV channel to the Food Network. <laughs> you pretend <laughs> that you're eating what you see on the Food Network. Yeah, yeah. So if they're eating steak on the Food Network. <laughs> You were eating your bread. Eyes. Yeah. You're just imagining that estate. Damn. That struggle loaf. That is rough. Have you ever, have you ever struggled loaf? No. Okay. <laughs> Thankfully. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We'll wrap up soon then. One other thing I wanted to touch on is the rise of calisthenics girls. Yes. Because only in the past few years we've started seeing more and more girls in calisthenics. But good. It's sick. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's good. It's great to see. And um, yeah, shouts out to, we were having this discussion on the way here, shouts yeah. out to people like EJ, um, EJ Inc. on Instagram, she does, she's like, she's by far one of the strongest female calisthenics athletes oh, in the easy, UK. Easy, yeah. easy, easy. Um, and I think she inspires a lot of women to get involved, um, because it can be intimidating for a lot of women if they're just seeing like loads of like muscly dudes, like just banging Gather in a, of... a pentagram around the pull-up bars, <laughs> doing, their, <laughs> doing their pull-ups, right? Yeah, exactly, like, yeah. Um, because it's already intimidating enough like walking into a gym but and at least in the gym you've got like the leg machines and stuff like that which is where a lot of women feel more comfortable like they feel because yeah they want to work on their lower body so at least they've got that to kind of feel more comfortable doing but in the calisthenics part don't have that so yeah i can imagine that is very intimidating um so it's, it's great to see like people like ej inc who are just repping it out like yeah. she can clean out muscle ups she's got um i think she's got a one leg advanced type front lever or Mad. straddle front lever now 
Um, yeah, because yeah. you, you met her in the gym the other day, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Shouts out, like, literally just to say, oh, like, your content is sick and, yeah, well done because you produce actually good content. Um, and I can tell that she's a genuine person as well. Like, she's not one of these, like, bait influencers who are just being mad false. Like, she's actually, yeah, she's genuine and she's cool. So that's why I like her and follow her. Um, and, yeah, and, and there are other, there are other, like, way more, like, low key calisthenics girls that are out there just doing their thing. Um, so, yeah, it's good to see. Yeah. When we had a big uh, inter university meetup mm. at the Royal Oak Bars in London, like in November, for the University Cows Phoenix Association mm. inaugural meetup, like I was just shocked at how many girls there were as well. Yeah. Because, like, in my first year of uni, like Cows Phoenix, like I said, we had like one or two girls. And then over the years, we've had more and more. Um, and, and, like, when I went to a, a workout with Exit Uni Cows Sock when I was down there a couple weeks ago, it was like 50-50 and I was like, <laughs> I, I remember seeing some girls that I'd recruited in that Freshers Week who were still there and I was like, yes, and I was like, you, you stayed. <laughs> Good. But like, I was like, just at this meetup in London, we had over a hundred people, it was sick, you know, and you had some strong girls there. Yeah. And I was like, where were you like four years ago when I was first joining, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Oh, mad. Yeah, yeah. It, like, it was so good to see, you Yeah. Know? And now all the Kawasog romances are going to blossom. You know? <laughs> like those are strong babies doing muscle ups <laughs> in the future. But. Trust me, the genetic potential is yeah. mad. Because like, I think, yeah, some girls are like worried. They're like, oh, I don't want to get too muscly because, you know, people yeah. might not think I'm attractive. But mm. I'm like, there's nothing more attractive. If I see a girl bashing out pull-ups, yeah. I'm like, marry me. Like, yeah, that's what know? I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it, it is genuinely attractive. And it's funny. It's competency. Because, yeah, and it's also just like, it's funny because I remember like back in the day, when people used to go, oh yeah, if a girl's got abs, like, and you can see them, like, oh, it's not attractive. And before I started working out, like, I agreed with that statement. And I was like, oh, like, yeah, I guess, because, yeah, it just looks... But, like, now that I work out, I'm like, that's really hot. Like, yeah. if a girl's got, like, visible abs, yeah, that's very hot. Because um, it's also indicative of many other things, like their, their uh, discipline, their like just their general mind state like they want to improve themselves they want to do well all of these things are like very admirable traits so yeah it's uh it's cool it's cool to see yeah big up yeah shouts out man and yeah like i don't know if if there are any girls who do calisthenics who are listening to this or want to get into it but yeah like go for it because it's, it's it's so much fun yeah um and you you'll love find it. your girly friends there as well like, yeah 100 you know, they're yeah, around yeah. and they're on the internet you know trust yeah yeah and it's it's just like it, it makes you feel genuinely strong and genuinely empowered. Like being able to, to, to command your body in these, in, in ways that most people can't, it's an amazing feeling. Yeah. Um, and one that I encourage for everyone. Absolutely. And then like a lot of girls that I've spoken to, like a lot of their fitness goals, they would love to be able to just do one pull up, just one, you yeah. know? And I'm like, yeah. we, we can, you know, calisthenics is the way. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're all about is pull ups. So, yeah. Um, you know, and you've come to the right place. Exactly, and a lot of a lot of girls get put off by the fact that they can't do any. Um, so the key is just to stick with it and work through the progressions. Get a resistance band out, and yeah, because I've seen loads of girls cleaning out like really good solid pull ups. So yeah, it's it's very possible, and the more girls who do it, the more girls will see it because it's all about like representation. Like the only I think the only reason why I got into calisthenics is because I saw Hannibal for King doing it, and he's mm. a black guy, and. Mm it's interesting because I saw like the Bar Brothers doing it before and I was like, oh, this is cool. But when I saw a black guy doing it, I was like, yes, this is what I really want to do. And it would be the same for women as well. Mm. If women are seeing women doing it, they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to try this. And yeah. they're going to know that it's possible as well. So yeah, um, yeah, get involved. Yeah, okay. One of the last things I wanted to touch on just popped into my mind. I had this idea, at least in the past, in like the early days of Calisthenics. I like the Calisthenics guy you see on the internet. If you, ha if you had all the different fitness person types, the calisthenics guy would be like the fuck boy where he's like he's really good looking he's really buff he's always yeah. got a shelf he's like haha look at me i can do like pull-ups and muscle-ups <laughs> love me <laughs> you know but like i feel like that's, that's really not, that's not entirely wrong yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly these, these stereotypes exist for a reason yeah but i'm not saying that the people obviously still exist mm -hmm. but i feel like it's evolved into something much more wholesome now yes and like, i don't know what kind of people do you think calisthenics people normally are um I believe that calisthenics people gen tend to generally be very humble and very grounded and connected and also just nice. Like they're just genuinely nice um, because there's there is a lot of ego in calisthenics, but it's a, it's a different type of thing because it's not like the gym where everyone's walking around trying to be the biggest guy in the gym and it's all very like superficial. Calisthenics is also 
it's almost quite spiritual because it's just you and your body and you have to get in tune with your body in order to ascend to the highest pinnacle of what your body can do so you really have to dig deep and really have to form a really strong connection with your body and that's a very character building experience so it's like people who do that and are on that journey regardless of whether you are whether you're advanced whether you're a beginner the fact that you're doing that is indicative of the kind of person that you are and you're the kind of person who values those kinds of things so it's yeah it's uh i feel like people who do calisthenics are are very cool and very chill and yeah. yeah they're they're genuinely nice people yeah and even if you do see them like doing all these cool stuff on instagram like say when we found out that nick was coming to exeter uni yeah like we found him on instagram before and we like oh my god this guy's like world champion like absolute chad like yeah yeah, yeah. you know looks like the stereotypical calisthenic slug boy shout right? out to nick by shout the way. out to nick big love he's a real um, one he is <laughs> he is um and we were like we were a we were intimidated because we like oh my god is he going to come to our little peewee calisthenic society and like think it's really shit yeah because you know none of us can do planches or anything that he can i remember do. you saying that on the last right. podcast that he was yeah, on. yeah yeah exactly yeah. yeah and um like uh yeah you know we weren't sure what he was like but he is one of the loveliest guys i've ever met and yeah. he, like you said humility like when we've been trying to attract people to the society which he's now president of you know you'll never hear him in his life say he's a world champion yeah. apart from his one post on instagram when he became a world champion cows fennix athlete you'll never hear it ever yeah and like th- i love the humility it's so inspiring but when you're trying to attract people to your society <laughs> you got to ham it up, you know? So yeah, I can yeah. say it for him, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. He's such a sound guy, right? Yeah. And yeah, there again, there's the balance. Like, yeah. Because yeah. Um, yeah, like he, I can tell he's a very humble guy and I'd like to meet him. Um, and I will, you for will, sure. Um, and yeah, like I could tell from the way that he was talking that he's a genuinely cool, humble, chill guy. Um, and it's, it's funny because he's so humble and that's, again, that's just true humility. Like he didn't even want to say that he's world champion. No. Like, because you get some people that you would not be able to hear otherwise yeah <laughs> they would just like literally every fucking moment of the day yeah. they'd be peeling open a banana and be going oh yeah do you know what yeah i can peel open this banana so well because i'm actually the world champion of yeah, 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 yeah. and <laughs> my fingers are so strong because i've just been gripping <laughs> all of these bars and it's just like sharp but like he, yeah exactly he's so humble he just doesn't he doesn't even want to say it but again there's the balance because in the context of the society obviously yeah if you're trying to grow it yeah don't feel any type of way of saying that because yeah that will people will be like holy shit like we've got the world champion here mm. who's gonna teach us like how how to yeah get stronger so yeah and that's exactly why like on my instagram for example i i try to strike the balance like because my content i feel is is accessible but at the top like it says oh um my youtube channel and then how many subscribers i have mm-hmm. but i do that tactically because yeah. i know that People. it gives you authority exactly and people, credibility exactly and people are going to be more likely to actually trust what i'm saying if, yeah. if i say that so yeah that's why nice okay cool is there any other last things before the final question um no bring nice. on the final question okay what is that Ooh. <laughs> um, so if you had a billboard to the world oh, yeah and you could put any message on it what would you put that's it can it. be deep it can be silly whatever you want give ashton a free lifetime supply of <laughs> oxtail and jerk chicken, please. Um, I would say, hmm, what would I say? Is there a character limit? Is there a word limit? No, no. <laughs> it's gonna be another two hours of the podcast. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I'll try and think of something. I this is. I know I should say something like very profound and like I can't think of anything. So I will just say strive to be better that's what would be on the billboard nice. strive to be better because i think that's what everyone should at least try to do because and i'm again i'm not trying to talk about this from like i'm not trying to say that i'm like the fucking pinnacle of achievement or i'm perfect because i'm not at all and there's still a lot that i have to work on but yeah i think everyone should at least try to be the best version of themselves that they can again sounds very cliche like it sounds like a very rubbish thing to say but imagine how cool and fun and just genuinely better society would be if everyone always tried to be better like it would be we'd live we'd probably have hover cars by now we don't, I don't yeah. even know why we don't even have them yet so yeah it's like we yeah it would just be better for everyone and i feel like especially nowadays like there's a real thing on especially on social media where it's like 
people are encouraging others to indulge in mediocrity and i hate that because it's just like why are you trying to encourage other people to be worse when you could be encouraging other people to be better like all of these like memes that are like oh why have abs when you can have kebabs it's like shut up like <laughs> like honestly just shut up like do something better and again that's why i've got my youtube channel because that's what i'm trying to do but it's it's yeah maybe that maybe that or maybe it would be a joke but i can't think of a joke right now but either way something that would have a positive effect nice <laughs> amen come Ashton, on G. it's been a pleasure thank you for coming on the podcast <laughs> you're welcome Sick. thank you for having me yeah nice okay and last thing where can people find you if they have any questions okay so if they want to slide in your dms <laughs> uh, so YouTube is where the magic happens in terms of all of the most helpful content that I've got that's on YouTube so that's if you just search Ashton Fitness on YouTube you will find me um, I am the smaller mixed race guy who does calisthenics there's another guy called Ashton Hall Fitness that comes up when, oh, you, type in, oh, <laughs> when you type in Ashton Fitness he's like some massive hulk of a guy I am the calisthenics one so uh, yeah uh, Ashton Fitness on YouTube or you can uh, follow me on Instagram as well because I post a lot of content on there. Uh, and my Instagram is at Ashton underscore fitness underscore official. Lol, because Ashton Fitness was already taken. So it was oh, Ashton peak. Fitness official. You're the official one. <laughs> there you go. You've got yeah. So um, yeah, that's where you can find me as well. Uh, Twitter, I've got a Twitter, but I don't even post on there. Uh, I don't even know what the handle is. I think it's just at Ashton Fitness again. But yeah, Instagram, YouTube, those are the main two. Nice. Cool. Yeah, thank you very much yeah buddy you're welcome <laughs> there we have it ladies and gents i hope you enjoyed the episode this was actually just the second time that ashton and i have ever met in person but we get on like a house on fire and we really had a great time recording this episode i genuinely do believe his callous Phoenix content is some of the best out there and i strongly encourage you to check him out now if you've listened to the end as always i love you Make sure to follow this podcast on your favourite streaming platform. Subscribe to my free newsletter at jamieboehm.substack.com and follow me on Instagram, pretty please, at jamie.a.boehm. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.